Yep, go ahead. <clears throat> D11 Sports presents St. Luke's Sports Medicine Game of the Week. Parkland School District Stadium to site for East Penn Conference football action. It's week number eight. It's a D11sports.com game of the week presented by St. Luke Sports Medicine, the Golden Hawks of Bethlehem Catholic with a record of 5-2, and two, taking on the Trojans from Parkland, checking in with a record of 7-0. and oh. Hi, and welcome, everyone. Al DeCar alongside Matt Avanger. So glad you could join us high atop the press box here on the wayside. We feel like we're in space here. Uh, we expect to have a great matchup between these two teams, two teams that are playing well this season, uh, one team coming in still hot and the other team still trying to rebound. And you, the team that's really hot right now is Parkland. They're seven and zero, really having a fantastic year under Coach Monsman. But like you said, Bethlehem Catholic started off five and zero, has lost two in a row, hasn't scored a point in those two losses. But talking to Coach Ward, he knows they were right in those games. They were really close to being in those games, just couldn't convert in the red zone. That's something they need to focus on tonight. Now let's talk about these two teams. The Golden Hawks at five and two. Tyler Ward in his first year, coming off the loss against Freedom, twelve to nothing. One of their key players, only a sophomore, their quarterback, Caden Vasa. And Caden Vasa is able to do it with his legs and his arm. Uh, over seven hundred yards rushing as well as passing. He is their leading rusher and leading passer. Uh, and he has a plethora of guys around him and an offensive line that protects him. So he's going to have to have some patience, some poise in the pocket, and get the ball out and deliver some big plays for them tonight. Well, for Parkland, Tim Monsman now in his eighth year at the helm, 69-21. and They're coming off a shutout win against Allen, 42 to nothing. We'll highlight Luke Spang. Luke Spang has done everything for this Parkland offense that he can. Uh, he, he's a very poised quarterback. At starting is his third year starting and just has been very successful. And They need that leadership. And with down two offensive starters on the offensive line, which we'll talk about later, Luke Spang's going to have to step up in that leadership role and along with Trey Tremba and deliver a win for Coach Monsman tonight. Well, it's homecoming here at Parkland. We'll get ready for the starting lineup and the opening kickoff when we return. It's our D11sports.com Game of the Week presented by St. Luke Sports Medicine. At St. Luke's Orthopedic Care, you can trust us with your hands, feet, shoulders, hips, and knees because healthy bones and joints mean you can do more. You can trust us to recommend the right approach to care, including joint sparing treatments and therapies. And when surgery is the only choice, we offer options to help you heal faster, including technology-assisted joint replacements and muscle sparing hip surgery. St. Luke's, the orthopedic care you trust, now more than ever. Yeah, right. We are back here at Parkland School District Stadium, so glad you could join us. Uh, getting ready for this matchup between Bethlehem Catholic and Parkland. And then joining us down the sideline is Derek Moore, who has talked to both coaches. Derek? Thanks, guys. I got an opportunity to speak with both coaches before the game. We'll start on the Bethlehem Catholic side with Coach Ward. I asked him, how does his team plan on containing Matt Trey Tremba tonight? And he goes, we are going to have to load the box, but we can't have all our eyes on him as there's a lot of different playmakers on that Parkland side that can beat you both vertically and receiving-wise. I also had the opportunity to ask him, what's been the one thing his offense has struggled with the past few weeks as they are coming off back-to-back -back shutout losses? He says, listen, we just got to be a little bit more efficient in the red zone tonight and take advantage. He believes there was five or ten plays the past two weeks that if his team would have been, ex been able to execute, they would be 7-0 and as well. On the Parkland side of things, I had an opportunity to speak with Coach Montsman, and he said, listen, I asked him, what has been the key to success for his undefeated season? He goes, a lot of guys have stepped up. They've had a lot of injuries on that offensive line, and offensive line has been a lot of shuffling around. I also asked him about his defense, and they also, they, he said they also said he's been they've been solid as well. Al, we're in for a good one tonight. Back to you. All right, Derek, thanks a lot. Get ready, and happy birthday to Derek. He's 21. Oh, that. boy. So he is now moving up in age. At 21, that's a good age, I hear. What do we got, dinner at Grumpy's after this? I don't know. I don't know. I know he's got a big celebration going on tomorrow. 
St. Luke's the region's largest sports medicine provider, covering more than 200,000 student enrollment and 40,000 student athletes, covering eight counties and providing the most comprehensive and advanced treatment for athletic injuries. St. Luke's offers athletic training, orthopedic care, physical therapy, and concussion management, plus sports performance training for individual athletes and teams. During these extraordinary times, you can trust St. Luke's sports medicine to provide extraordinary care. Support for the D11sports.com Game of the Week comes from Michael R. Globus, financial advisor at Morgan Stanley and Easton. For all your investment needs, call Michael R. Globus at 610-559-6380, located at 101 Larry Holmes Drive, Suite 301, Easton, PA. Morgan Stanley, Smith Barney, LLC, member SIPC. Tonight's game also brought to you by Stu's Tire Center, located at 3930 Independence Drive in Schnecksville, in need of New tires, a wheel alignment, or an oil change, stop by Stu's Tire Center or give them a call at 610-799-4298. Locally owned since 1981. Discover your smile by visiting Freel Ortho with two locations in McCungie and Whitehall. You want great care and service? Look no further than Dr. Freel and his experienced team. Freel Ortho serving Allentown and surrounding communities for almost 25 years. Schedule a consultation with Dr. Freel today by calling 610-820-5500. Five zero. Teams are about to make their way onto the field. And it's about a 7.05 kickoff time. And a nice breezy night. We get a colder up here, by the way. Just want to throw it out there. But it's actually a nice night here in October, for sure. Oh, it absolutely is. As you turn around, we get a good good view of the ticket gate behind us and the line still wrapped around people still filing in for this game tonight big matchup uh, between these two teams again 7-0 against a 5-2 and two team coming in it's, it's taking them a while to get onto the field I don't Not, you know usually yeah. they're on already and it's a little bit later than usual than coming on the field. Are you tired of not receiving the results you desire in your custody, support, or divorce cases? Attorney Frank J. Travato at Benner and Travato has a history of winning in and out of the courtroom for decades across the Lehigh Valley. So don't waste any more time or money elsewhere. Schedule your free consultation today with Attorney Frank J. Travato at 610-867-3900. No, Frank obviously played at Bethlehem Catholic, went on to play at Lehigh University as well. Well, Parkland's made their way onto the field, and Bethlehem Catholic will be making their way onto the field as well. Man, I think, you know, one thing that we've talked about this over and over again is, you know, the first you, tempo, you know, going going early and, and getting things going quick uh, and see what happens, uh, you know, with these two teams. And um, I think the early part of this game may not set the tone for it, but if it's for Bethlehem Catholic, they need it more so than Parkland needs, I believe. They do, coming off of those two losses. And as Derek said and Coach Ward had told us, he felt and he can put the film on and show the players we're 10 to 15 plays away from being 7-0. and And it, it seems like a lot, but he was talking about multiple, multiple trips into the red zone and coming up empty. I believe he said 0-4. He came up empty 0-4 against... Emmaus two weeks ago and then 0-3 in the red zone last week against Freedom. 0-4 against Freedom. 0-4 against Freedom. You can't go that many times into the red zone and come out empty against quality teams. No question. Now we pause for the Parkland Alma Mater followed by the National Anthem.
minutes away from the opening kickoff. When it comes to towing, trailer or auto pair, auto body repair experience matters. Let Ironton Auto Body put their 70 plus years of experience to work for you. Locally owned and operated with 24 hour emergency towing and recovery services along with 24 hour trailer repair. When something goes wrong, don't trust it to anyone. Look no further than Ironton Auto Body. Let our family take care of your family. Call 610-799-3241. For over 175 years, New York Life has been helping families and businesses with their life, disability, and long-term care planning needs. Whether you have current coverage in place or in need of reviewing your options, please contact their office in Allentown to find the right plan to fit your needs. Call New York Life at 610-616-4430 today. Also a shout out to Culligan Water. Culligan Water asks, when's the last time you had your water tested? Get a free in-home water assessment from Reynolds Culligan. Visit yourwater.net for more information. Speaking of New York life, now it's time as we take a look at our keys to the game, Matt, as we bring in both teams and see what's going to happen. We start with Bethlehem Catholic. And as we just talked about, uh, Bethlehem Catholic offensively needs to finish in those key situations. They have been successful driving the ball 20 to 20 between the 20s, but once they get inside that red zone, they have to finish with the, in the end zone with touchdowns. They can't come away with field goals tonight. And they need to limit the big plays from Parkland. T Trey Tremba, you have Luke Spang, Connor Johns, Jendel um, as well. Those guys can make plays all over the field, so a matter of holding them, kind of stopping them, and limiting what they can do. And for the Parkland Trojans. And you see it right there, the Vassa brothers, uh, being able to limit those home run plays by them. Caden at quarterback, Carter at wide receiver, one a sophomore, one a freshman, uh, getting a lot of time and a lot of action this season for Bethlehem Catholic and being very successful. On the other side, they also need to finish drives and limit the penalty yardage. Again, talked about two new offensive starters on the offensive line. Uh, that's going to be a huge task for them, uh, especially with the nerves in a big game. Can they come out? Can they not jump off sides, not get those holding penalties in key situations? And can Parkland Trojans finish in the end zone as well and not settle for field goals? Matt, you and I, we talked about the, uh, the offensive line, and we'll get to that when we get to the starting lineup. But obviously, you know, we always say it, but sometimes the credit is not where it's at, right, where, you know, your team goes through your offensive line and the big guys in front uh, that get things done. And, uh, you know, a couple of these players are still um, not not with the team and, you know, hopefully be back down the road. But, you know, when you play shorthand, it's like next next man up, right? Exactly. And, you know, both programs are set up to do that, to be, to be able to be successful, to bring in those next guys up. They're prepared. They're ready to go. A lot of teams nowadays, they don't have just single starters. They have guys that are rotating in and out of those lineups, series by series, play by play. So the amount of action and the amount of time they're getting helps prepare them for moments like this. And, again, hopefully for both, they come out of here healthy. That's what every team's looking to do, come out healthy and have a hard physical game played. Now get ready for week number eight of the high school football season here at Parkland School District Stadium. It is homecoming night. So a big night here at Parkland High School. Bethlehem Catholic looking to stop a two-game losing streak, get on the scoreboard as well. They've been shut out the last two games. And, uh, you know, we talked to Coach Ty Ward before the game, had a chance to actually broadcast his football games when he was at Lehigh. I believe he was part of that 2010-2011 Patriot League Championship team um, under Coach Cohen. And now he's here back in the Valley. And he's coaching football here at Bethlehem Catholic. So I know he's excited. And when he got here, you know, it's like anything else. We have, This weekend, well, we have Coach Monsman. This weekend we have three first-year head coaches on D11sports.com. Tonight we have Ty Ward. Tomorrow, even though Rob Malosky's been around, mm -hmm. first year for his school. Okay, let's make that straight. And uh, Andy Marino at Whitehall tomorrow night. We'll have that game live uh, at Central Catholic at Jay Bernie Crump Stadium in Allentown. Well, a cooler than usual evening up here, an extra 10 degrees cooler, as on the tee is Doug Bell. Parkland ranked number two in the state right now in the six head classification behind St. Joseph Prep. And this one will be fielded right around the three yard line. And that one's gonna be taken back by Jacob Sutton. We're gonna hear number 28th name a lot for sure tonight. So 
So with that, we'll pop in the starting lineup for the offense. And we talked about the Vasa brothers, but Jacob Sutton at running back, number 28, he's not the biggest player on the field. Comes in at 5'7", 170 pounds senior, but he runs much bigger than that. He runs with a lot of strength, a lot of power, and a lot of passion. So get used to seeing him holding the ball and running it up the middle tonight. Yep. He's going to run it up the middle, but not much there at all. He gets that interior line to start things off. And with that, we'll pop in that Parkland defense. And again, Parkland defense has been great all year long. It has been. A couple guys in there. Robbie Roosh has, I think, from his defensive end spot, and Jake Beetleman, the other defensive end. Those two are going to have to contain this offensive running game and allow their length in at the receiver position, or I'm sorry, the defensive back position, to shut down these receivers for Bethlehem Catholic. Looking to throw. Vasa puts one up, and that one goes sideline. A nice throw. It was overthrown, though, by a couple yards as he was looking for his brother. And Carter Vasa. But those numbers, Matt, for Caden, 42 of 89, 752, 12 touchdowns, <laughs> one INT. And then, you know, running-wise, 232 carries, 758 yards, and four touchdowns. That's impressive. It is. And I, I really, the 42 for 89, you know, it comes out just under 50%, but just very efficient with the ball and very few turnovers from that position. Vasa looking to throw. He gets flushed out. Now here comes the pressure by the Trojans. Still throws off the back foot in traffic. And that one almost picked off. Bounced off a Parkland defender. I think the closest player there was Alex Kirchner. Kelcher, looked, excuse me. It looked like a little confusion as two Becca offensive receivers were in the same vicinity kind of running the same route and just nowhere for Vasa to go for it. Jeremy Fryer back to punt. Trey Tremba standing on his own 45 yard line. High snap. And gets a good one off. That hangs up there for a while. Tremba going to have to go back and get that one. Calls for the fair catch. You have to keep an eye on that snap to see if Parkland decides at some point with that slow snap, a little high, do they try to come after one of these punts and block it? Take a look at the starting 11 for Parkland on offense. And we talked about Luke Spang in the opening, but it's the offensive line that has a little bit of reworking here. It has some new guys in there. Uh, they're going to have their hands full with the defensive front of Bethlehem Catholic, but they're going to have to just hold on, work as a unit, and just open up the holes for Trey Tremba and give Spang time. Yeah, one of the big players that you're not seeing is, is Kale Kumanitsky. He got hurt in the Nazareth game that you and I did mm -hmm. uh, a few weeks back. Um, and they had to, you know, you're moving guard to tackle and going right, you know, but this is where you're playing him right now. Was there a flag here? No, no. just a matter, okay. a matter of spotting okay. the ball. Darrell Woodring is our official tonight. So Matt. good field position for Parkland to start their first drive. Yeah, from the 44-yard line. Spang looking to throw, and now he's going to run. Has a lot of space, and Spang straight through the middle. He goes for about 13 and a half for a Stu's tire first down. We can take a look at Bethlehem Catholic's deep out of the play. It's a lot of pressure coming from Bethlehem Catholic. Both blitz both linebackers, and he's there, uh, just leaves his feet. Spang pulls the ball down and picks up a huge gain. Of the two quarterbacks tonight, Vasa the one who runs more, but there Spang gets the better of it early on. So ball just like that all the way down to the 40-yard line of the Golden Hawks, and Tremba powers forward. He gets tackled on the play by Solomon Sutton. As we talked about that defense, the, the up-front guys, Jacob Lance, Sammy Aashi, uh, Robert Williams, those linebackers, Solomon Sutton, Carlos Perez, Robert Kusar. Those guys are going to have their hands full with Trey Tremba and this rushing attack of Parkland. Looking to throw middle part of the field, and that was a perfect pass and the completion. Doberman makes the catch for a Stu's tire first down, and Parkland in business here. 
And if they, they continue to uh, catch Bethlehem Catholic defense and blitzes, linebackers playing up tight because of the threat of Trey Tremble running the ball, that middle of the field is going to be open right behind them about 10, 15 yards all night. First and goal from the nine for the Trojans. They'll go far side and trying to make the turn, pushing forward for a couple of extra yards is Connor Johns. Johns will be going to the University of Pennsylvania. And that was all Luke Spang and Connor Johns as, a, as an audible out of the play. They had offensively, they had a, a, the H back and another back pulling the lead Tremba. Tremba came up behind Spang looking to get the ball. But Spang decided to get it out to Connor Johns, who had a nice cushion from D-back and able to pick up good yardage on first down. Pick your poison here. All right, second down and goal from the four. They'll go to Tremba. Tremba didn't see anything inside, and he'll get down to about, about the four-yard line. Yeah, you have to credit the guys up front. They just take the blocks and don't let them get off on the linebackers. One of the guys, Jacob Lance, he took on two blockers. He held that double team and didn't allow them to come off on the linebackers. Enough for another Stu's Tires first down. So now first and goal from the three. Tremba dives forward, gets down to about the half yard line or so. We'll bring up a second down. And that's another play, Carlos Perez, number 34 for Bethlehem Catholic, in the backfield, just not able to, to turn direction to find Tremba and bring him down. Now Parkland wasting no time getting back in the huddle. And again, it's going to be Tremba. No, it's not. Uh, driving in there is Luke Spang. So Luke Spang gets Parkland on the scoreboard with a one-yard touchdown. Parkland you, leads by a score of 6 to nothing. You have to credit the Parkland coaching staff with that drive. They utilize Spang in a way they really have not utilized him a whole lot this season in rushing the ball. Their all eyes were on Tremba, and you can see the amount of white jerseys that commit to Tremba up the middle, and Spang pulls the ball out, the end crashes in, and he waltzes into the end zone for the touchdown. Aiden Gallagher with the extra point attempt. And that one straight through the middle. So Parkland with 8.34 on the clock. Score first. They lead by the score of 7 to nothing. And Bethlehem. you mentioned a solid drive. Absolutely. Bethlehem Catholic nearly comes up with a block from number 12. Devin Green Williams almost comes in for the block. And it's a good drive, but I think still with, with Bethlehem Catholic, you're okay. Uh, you're, you're right where you need to be. You just need to tighten up a little few things defensively and, and just solidify what you're trying to do against that running game. Defensive front, I think, is getting the pressure they need. The linebackers are getting where they need to be. Uh, just need to come, oh, come through a little bit more under control. Matt, we'll get a chance to see the Golden Hawks again next week uh, taking on the Nazareth Blue Eagles. And this, well, I mean, I know we always talk about the schedule later on, but this is a, a brutal schedule this, these four weeks for Bethlehem Catholic and the likes of Freedom, Emmaus, Parkland, Nazareth. You're hitting every single heavyweight. And then who do they finish up with? Central Catholic. Mm -hmm. Five games in a row against solid opponents. It, and six if you want to include Easton at the front end of that. And Central Catholic's been winning their games. By you know, field goals. By field goals. <laughs> and we'll see Luke Myers tomorrow night. And this one will be a touch back here with 8.34 o'clock. So glad you could join us here at D11sports.com Game of the Week presented by St. Luke Sports Medicine. Again, a nice brisk night here in October, a beautiful night in October. And, uh, Matt, you're going to ask because we're up top, the press box here on the opposite side. Fans are still coming in, by the way. <laughs> There is a line. There is still a line with fans coming in. And we also have a good view of the, the homecoming floats in the garage behind us. Yes, we do. So it's time to get the field position starting at the 20-yard line for Caden Vasa. Vasa will go with Sutton. Sutton splits through the defense, and he almost got through there. Nice pickup of about eight, seven, eight yards. And that's all he needs, just a little bit of space, a little bit of room, and he's going to sneak through. And then all of a sudden, he squirts out the other end, and he's five, six, seven yards down the field. Okay, 
from here and tomorrow, a possibility of some rain, just a possibility. Just a small possibility. <laughs> yep. I think it's going to pass by. Yeah. Maybe after the game. Second down and three from the 27. Voss are going to try to move up field, but not a chance. Looks like he may have picked up a yard. Bobby uh, Roosh. But, but that closed down quickly on him on the quarterback draw. I don't think the heavy stuff's going to come down for quite some time. I think you can get a, you can get a full 18 in tomorrow. Uh oh, talking about golf. <laughs> Little caddy shack. <laughs> Look at you, the comedian already. Maybe yeah, we try. <laughs> Third down and three. <laughs> Remember, Mike's can hear everything I heard you. Oh, boy. This one comes oh. to the near side. Fortunate for you Bethlehem know, Catholic. You know, pe people at home wondering what we're talking about. Go ahead. Listen, right here. Sean Riley, our producer, is not only pushing all the buttons right now. Usually they're right. He's also got a Chick-fil-A sandwich in his hand, enjoying himself there. You, can't, you cannot beat the Chick-fil-A no. sandwich, no. He, he's, he's relaxed. No. And that's the Parkland concession stands for you. Yeah, I put in an order Little the other day the to Sean. Concession stand. I, I, thought, I thought it was, you know, he, had a, he picked it up on his own. I didn't realize he went down the concession stand. I'll have to send Dave there. So fourth down and three. So we'll be back-to-back -back three and outs here for Bethlehem Catholic. Another solid punt. And Tremble calls for another fair catch. But almost the exact place that they had the first time. Just a little bit deeper, but still, same thing, same result in that the Parkland defense is holding up to what they need to do, and you have to wait and see where does Bethlehem Catholic, because offensively they're still in their game plan. They're still in that, probably that scripted first few plays of what they want to do, how they want to attack. Right now, Coach Ward looking at what they've been given defensively from Parkland and how they want to get out there and exploit that. So you look to see some changes in the next drive or two. So Parkland will start from their own 38-yard line. Middle part of the field, wide open. He goes to Robbie Roosh, and Roosh breaks a tackle. It gets inside the 30 for a Stu's tire first down. You talked about the execution earlier. That middle part has been open all night so far. And this time, they, Bethlehem Catholic nearly misses Jendel Sanchez in the slot. That's not a guy you want to leave open. But they also leave Robbie Roosh. They had nobody for the third receiver out of that three-by-one set, streaking down the, the far hash. So just like that, Parkland has the ball at the 29-yard line. May have moved quick here. No flags. And that one goes across to Tremba on the reception. And Matt, you'll have the uh, you'll be part of the JV game, I believe, uh, coming up, right? Monday night at Bethlehem Catholic JV so officiating. You go, you go from the booth to officiating. What do you yeah. do? Just, just keep going back and forth. <laughs> Want to point out for for Parkland number twenty-eight, Reed Andrush, uh, Coach Monsman spoke so highly of having him back in the lineup, uh, the first game back this season. They got hurt in a scrimmage game. Second down and two from the 21-yard line. Spang high snap, pitches it over to Tremba. Tremba jumps over the first tackle and gets a Stu's tire first down. And Parkland just moving along here against this Bethlehem Catholic defense. What they're doing, I think, is they're, they're having a lot of success by balancing their attack. They're hitting the pass plays where they need to. They're then coming back to the run getting that defense to suck up in closer to the line of scrimmage, then hitting those pass plays right behind them where they vacated. As in the first drive, Parkland can get a first down without a touchdown. As they start this from the 12, they go back to Tremba. Tremba gets down inside the 10, and we'll get down to about the six-yard line. That time Bethlehem Catholic had a guy on the edge on that right side, defensive left. Then he left to go out in coverage and created that soft edge. And then Parkland just exploits that with the running play off that edge. Time of possession has been all in favor of Parkland after two, three and outs for Bethlehem Catholic. Ball on the six for Spang. 
And once again to Tremba. Tremba will dive forward, will not get the touchdown, but will get another Stu's tire first down. So first and goal for Parkland. That was a nice cut by Trey Tremba. He saw the, a lot of white jerseys out wide, out on the perimeter. Stuck his foot in the ground, got north-south, went for that goal line, and comes up just about, looks like two yards short. Last possession was spanked from a yard. Spang takes the snap, and this time it is Tremba. Tremba dives through and gets in for the touchdown from two yards. So Parkland leads by the score of 13 to nothing. I think Parkland's trying to make a statement in this game tonight with how they're attacking using this rushing attack. As you still, you cannot commit just to Tremba because Spang has shown the ability to run off that pool on that play, and it holds the defense just enough to where they can't load up on Tremba. Aiden Gallagher with the extra point attempt for Parkland. High snap, and that one is up and through. 14-0 Parkland at the 423 mark. And Matt, you were talking about, you know, you can't, you know, you, you have other options when you do that. I mean, Spang's numbers, we talked about it, right? 1,058 through the air. Trey Tremba, 1,068 on the ground. And, and that's fantastic balance when I mean, you look at it, uh, yes. <laughs> fantastic balance. Let me throw you another one. Spang, 13 passing touchdowns. Tremba, 16 rushing touchdowns. And that's a lot of points. You're scoring a lot of points. Uh, but, yeah, just creating that balance. Uh, we, we have yet to see T.J. Lawrence, their other running back, mm -hmm. the freshman in the game, but he has 26 carries on his own. Tremba coming into this game had 96 carries. So combined, they're over 120. But then when you look at the passes, 102 passes, you're still looking at 102 attempts, still a lot of balance. And, and I think that's what allows their offense to have the success they, they do. So let this one fly, and this one will be right around the seven for Sutton. And he gets taken down to the ground right around the 20 21 yard line. And that's been right about where the field position for Bethlehem Catholic has been all night so far as they go out and start their third drive. If you're a student from any District 11 school interested in broadcasting journalism or photography, check out d11sports.com. Follow your dream. Get close to the action. Take part in our student internship program. For more information, contact your athletic director or reach out to myself or Dave at d11sports.com. Derek Moore on the sideline, graduated in 2021 has been at uh, Northampton Community College the last couple years, and he's done some great interviews for us in the past, you know, with Saquon uh, Barkley and, uh, you know, a number of different events he's been at uh, and continues to excel, um, you know, doing Penn State Lehigh Valley games and just giving him opportunities every time we get him. Um, and he's, he's been enjoying each time, and I think, you know, with experience, you know, you can only get better, and we're seeing that from, uh, from Derek. We, we have are. three students from Parkland not here with us tonight. John Brubacher, uh, Nick Rivera, and Emma Kushner uh, just not be able to be with us tonight. But, uh, you know, we're spread around with a, a lot of reporters tonight uh, all over Twitter for some updates throughout the evening. There'll be a second down and 10. Vasa going to throw. And that one's overthrown about five, six yards, was looking in the direction of his brother Carter. And just like that, Matt's third down. And what we heard from Coach Monsman pregame, he, he spoke about, and you can kind of see it happening here, uh, the various different looks and fronts and pressures that they're bringing. It's never looking the same. They always have different ones. Right now they have their speed lineup on the field where they're, they're, there's nobody in a 50 to 79 number on the field right now. They just have a lot of the defensive ends for a pass rush and they're, they're going to just get after them and you won't know who's coming and that kind of that will confuse the offensive line. 
Class are going to throw, and that's the first completion of the night. And it is a Stu's tire first down. That was Sutton. And Sutton's the only receiver on that side. Vasa throws it and gets a back shoulder, which allows Sutton to make the adjustment, get his feet down inbounds, and pick up the first down. Well, a positive there if you're Bethlehem Catholic. And the clock down to three minutes and change. And they'll go to Sutton on the ground, try to spin through, but never release him. It was Roosh again with another tackle. Roosh is very active from that defensive end spot. He fights through blocks and stays at the line of scrimmage, which allows him to get down the line of scrimmage back and forth, either to the left or the right, and find that running back and get the tackle right around the line of scrimmage or maybe for a short gain. Pickup of just two, and first, I believe, first flag of the night. Am I correct? First flag. I think we're going to get a false start. There, Carlos Perez at the H back. He was on the wing. He just moved forward a little too soon. And Coach Ward had mentioned one of the issues that plagued them offensively in those last two games was getting behind in the sticks during their offensive drives, and this is not where they want to be, second and 13, second and 14. So first penalty of Costi won, second down and 13 from the 32. Again, right after you get that first down, you know, you on the ground again, I mean, that middle part of the line for Parkland. You always see number nine flying out of there, right? You do, and it's it's amazing how he gets in there every time from that defensive end spot. But it's not just him, it's it's all of them in there. 54 at the defensive tackle, Russell Clark, 57, Matt Dorsey. Those guys are eating up blocks and allowing those defensive ends and linebackers to either just have to beat one block or no block at all. Yeah, Bidelman also part of that line. So back to a third down and long with about a minute and 40 on the clock. Looking to throw. This is the most he's had to throw, and now he makes a turn. Looks in front and dives forward. This is going to be close. He's gonna, looks like he's going to be about short by about two yards. Matt, what are you doing here? And this is why Coach Ward gets paid the big bucks. <laughs> so a lot of oh, pressure so you're not coming coach, from Beetleman. So you're not coaching anymore. <laughs> so Beetleman makes a good play, and then <laughs> now you leave him in down. Fourth down, and it's almost two, right? That's a full two it, yards. It's a full two yards. And I don't mind the call here. I think Coach Ward. You try coach to draw Ward, him offside first? I think that's the first thing you do. And, and if you can, you know, the clock's coming down. Under a minute left in the quarter, try to get that excitement, try to get that energy, oh, and they go just for go it. for it. Go for it, and not going to get it. Defense came up huge there. I'm not sure the first hit was there, but it may have been Lawrence. And and you're going to call Lawrence, you're going to call Beetleman or any of those other guys making a tackle. The play was made by 57 Russell Clark in the middle. He got up under the offensive lineman, drove him two to three yards back, and Sutton ran into his back and had nowhere to go, which allowed all those other guys to get there quickly. So Parkland will get the ball at the Bethlehem Catholic 42-yard line. I do like the fact they, they made the call, no hesitation, went out and tried to make it happen. And I think right now that Bethlehem Catholic offense is looking for some spark. Oh, trying to get it out defensively. Now looking to throw. He gets hit as he throws, has a receiver looking for Tremba, but incomplete. Tremba had to go up and try to get that one. Spang just puts it a little bit too high, but I thought Spang also had Connor Johns on a skinny post down the middle about one to two steps beyond his, his cover man. Again, that middle of the field is, is remaining open. Mm -hmm. 
33 seconds left. Opening quarter, 14-0 Parkland. Two touchdowns, one by Spang, one by Tremba from a yard and two yards. Here from the 42. And they lose the football. It's on the ground. Who wants it? Bethlehem Catholic comes up with a defensive play. They needed that, and they got one. That's Robert Kuzar. Kuzar. Kuzar, as well as the linebacker in the middle coming through, they gave, as Carlos Perez, 34, they gave Tremba and Spang no option. Spang was looking to try to pull the ball, but if he pulled it, Kuzar was right there. If he gave it to Tremba, Perez was right there. And that time, and I had mentioned earlier on drives, Perez getting in the backfield and making plays, and being able to break down and make the play, he did on that time, and they come up with a big turnover. Tons of 28 seconds left. Parkham was driving, and here's Sutton, nowhere to go. So on that play, Matt, that was something that Bethlehem Catholic absolutely had to have, you know, because Parkland at will has been, you know, going downfield the last two drives. And instead, Bethlehem Catholic will end the first quarter, you know, down by the score of 14 to nothing because they're going to let the clock run out in this one. Hey, Parkland you're right. up That's 14 to nothing. Luke Spang from a yard, Trey Tremper from two as the horn sounds here. 14 nothing. you're watching our D11sports.com Game of the Week presented by St. Luke Sports Medicine. The team that we have put together of sport performance coaches and athletic trainers is why parents should choose St. Luke's University Health Network for their sport performance needs. St. Luke's and our coaches are going to provide the safest and most comprehensive training environment that a student athlete would want. And I, I don't think there's anything in this area that can rival it. St. Luke's Orthopedic Care. Extraordinary care in motion. We are back here at Parkland School District Stadium, so glad you could join us. 14-0 Trojans leading. But Bethlehem Catholic with the ball. And flying through is Sutton and Sutton across midfield. And I mentioned on that last drive, uh, before they had the turnover on downs, what, what was going to be that spark for this Bethlehem Catholic offense? And could it be that defensive turnover? Causing that turnover, getting the ball back, can that be the spark that gets this offense going? So there's a third down and five. Only one first down tonight for Bethlehem Catholic. Just underway here, second quarter, so glad you could join us for our D11sports.com Game of the Week. Presented by St. Luke Sports Medicine, Vasa, and he had his receiver, but that one incomplete to Makai Lap Lapierre. And unfortunately, as you said, Vasa had him. He just took his eyes to look upfield. Because it was a clean catch, it was happening so fast that there was nothing there. He looked upfield, took his eyes off the ball for just one second, and then puts it on the ground. So bring up a fourth down and five, and the punting team is in. Jeremy Fryer lets that one go, and again, no return. The ball at the 20-yard line. And that'll be the worst starting field position for the Parkland offense tonight. St. Luke's is the region's largest sports medicine provider, covering more than 200,000 student enrollment and 40,000 student athletes in Pennsylvania and New Jersey, covering eight counties and providing the most comprehensive and advanced treatment for athletic injuries. St. Luke's offers athletic training, orthopedic care, physical therapy, and concussion management, plus sports performance training for individual athletes and teams. During these extraordinary times, you can trust St. Luke's Sports Medicine to provide extraordinary care. <coughs> You know, Matt said, oh, it's not cold tonight. 
And then for some reason, I don't know where it came from, he get, grabs out this full wool coat. <laughs> yeah, full wool coat. That you would wear probably in the middle of February. <laughs> I don't know where he had it in his back pocket or what. So the carry there by Tremba. And you have to you have to figure that both Spang and Tremba heard about it on the sideline about taking care of that football and not putting it on the ground again tonight. Nice crowd on hand here, Parkland for a homecoming. Second down and seven. Spang gonna float this one across to Tremba. Tremba still on his feet, and he'll be short of that first down marker by about a yard or two. I think it's going to be a little bit more than that. They're, they're marking him out okay. at least, looks like three to four yards back. But that's, that's one of those, a lot of teams are using that, just a quick pass out to the back as he's leaving the backfield. It's, it's like an extension of a long running play, uh, just getting it out to him quickly, try to draw in those defensive linemen and then just put him on the perimeter with his receivers blocking. So third down incomplete. And you saw, you knew that was going to be yep. coming in, unfortunately. And it wasn't much. It was not much on the back. It was number 21, Kuzar. He's in coverage on, looked like Leo Doberman, number 14, running an out route just past the first down. And it wasn't catchable, but he was on his back trying to make a play. And again, not much contact. It didn't look that bad. It looked worse than probably what it was. I believe that's our third penalty yep. of the evening. So hopefully that's it. Yeah, right. But that would have been a big play to set up a fourth down, yeah. get the ball back to the Bethlehem Catholic offense. And the Bethlehem Catholic defenders, two yards off sides up top. Well, Pat, you open your mouth and look what happens. I know. There it is. You know, you officials are all the same. <laughs> are, are you wearing, can you hear what they're saying down there? Are you connected with them too? No, not connected. I didn't bring my headset. <laughs> I should have brought my headset, got the channel. <laughs> But you saw it, it was he just he was trying to get up in the face of his receiver, but in the me in doing so, ends up two yards beyond the line of scrimmage. Oh to Tremba. Tremba was delayed there for a second and then finds a sideline still on his feet. Stu's tire first down inside the 25-yard line. And still number 34 for Bethlehem Catholic, Carlos Perez is very active. You're going to see him come through. He's going to shoot through the inside gap and just misses pulling down Tremba from behind. And then Tremba catching some key blocks from his receivers picks up a huge gain down the far sideline. Freedom leading Easton by a score of six to nothing. Winston, Winston Hornet is covering that game for us. D11sports.com. Spang straight through the middle. Spang gets the sideline, and Spang will get taken out of bounds inside the ten yard line. A Stu's tire first down and first and goal for the Trojans. And clearly a design pass play because Spang looking to deliver the ball he gets them up in the air pulls it down and then he takes off although I stand corrected I think that might have been a running play as Russell Clark 54 was at least seven yards downfield before Spang even got there so that sets him up first and goal from the seven yard line and just as you say first and goal They'll call it from the eight. And Tremba's got his second touchdown of the night from eight yards. In that time, Tremba shows a lot of patience running behind his offensive line and just picking and choosing where he wants to go. He's not hitting full speed until he bursts 
to get north-south. He's just patient, waiting, sees his guys engage, and then just bursts north-south into the end zone for that eight-yard touchdown. So, so far, we're seeing a lot of the rushing attack mm -hmm. from Parkland. Have not really gotten Connor Johns, Jendo Sanchez into the action from the receiving spot. Look to see if they do that on their next offensive drive. Extra point, and that one was blocked. I'm not sure who got in on that one. I believe it was 65, 65. yes. So the block on a play by Frederick Mew, a senior. So that cuts the score, and it's 20 to nothing Parkland on top. And I mentioned before that Devin Green-Williams on both previous extra points was getting through. This time, Mew gets through from the middle and gets the block. Again, another spark for Bethlehem Catholic, but they need to capitalize offensively. So 20 nothing is your score. Again, homecoming night. We'll have the, are they bringing them out, Matt? They're, the trucks are coming the trucks out. trucks are coming out already. Yes. 10.02, they're warming them up. We got a preview. 10 minutes to go, they're early. <laughs> they're ready. There's a lot to be played here in this game. 20 to nothing on a return. That's Carter Vasa. And Vasa looked like he was going to get taken down. Now he doesn't. Still on his feet and still going. Again, only a freshman. And we also have a flag on the play. It looks like it's in the area of blocking the back, which will go against Bethlehem Catholic. Our Woodring, our official. So Bethlehem Catholic will move their ball back a little bit. And they'll mark this one at the 19-yard line. Actually, they'll mark down the 14-yard line. Excuse me. Looking to throw. Has a receiver and then gets buried. So the reception was made to Vasa. So Vasa completed that one, but quickly on the play was Nolan Cohen with the big stick. I think that's what Bethlehem Catholic does need to do a little bit more of to get going. Uh, either that quick play action, get the ball out of his hands quickly, or just some quick game, get get the ball out to the perimeter in a hitch, a slant, a fade, something quick that can move the ball down the field. So second down and four, the ball to 20. And they'll go to the ground. And not much there at all. So <laughs> you mentioned Roosh. Roosh is there <laughs> all the time. He continues to be there all the time. And Matt Dorsey helping out as well. And TJ Lawrence from the middle linebacker spot, he was in there as well. But again, Robbie Roosh just making plays all over the field tonight for Parkland. So that brings up a third down and three. Matt, am I correct? Is it only one first down for Bethlehem Catholic? I believe it's just that one first down on the penalty. Or no, one first down and then the pass play. On the pass. Uh, two first downs. So they got picked up one on the penalty. That's correct. So third down and three from the 21. This one huge because there's eight minutes and change on the clock. And that was nearly going to be a delay game on Bethlehem Catholic. Coach Ward gets the timeout in in time. 
Timeout comes at 8.16 on the clock. Timeout brought to you by Culligan Water. Culligan Water asks, when is the last time you had your water tested? Get a free in-home water assessment from Reynolds Culligan. Visit yourwater.net for more information. Yourwater.net. Culligan Water. Timeout comes at 8.16. <coughs> 20 to nothing is your score in this one. And you see the BS uh, right there for uh, the late Bob Stem, uh, uh, Frank Trevato. Um, you know, he played for Bob Stem, um, and, and he helped donate those uh, to the helmets uh, this week, you know, for, for Coach Stem. And just, you know, a big loss. I mean, uh, I, I broadcast the games with Bob Stem. Um, we had great short stories to sh share with Bob Stem and um, just a tremendous person. Um, not for a lack of words at all. He would always say it how it is and, and do his thing as it was. You know, played at Syracuse and uh, just, you know, a great part of what Bethlehem Catholic and the Phillipsburg communities are all about. He, he is. Um, you know, he's one of those guys that you hated him, but then you, yet at the same time you loved him just because of what he did. If you played against him, <laughs> oh, he was, at, he was the worst. You, you didn't like him at all. You know, he's taking players, he's doing this. But then, you know what, at the same time, his team's just being successful, and, and he's attra they're attracting kids because they're being successful. Um, then did the same thing over at Phillipsburg across the river. Um, just, you know, did a lot of great things for Lehigh Valley football and, and really had one of the first teams, if I'm not mistaken, to win a state title and bring it back to the Valley. Yep, this one thrown and incomplete. The ball was tipped. He was looking for Carter Vassa. And Carter Vassa was pleading Coach Ward to go for this again. I'm not quite sure if this wasn't tipped, that that's what sent it high maybe. Yeah, may have gotten, may have gotten a finger on it just to throw it a little bit high. But it was Reed Andrush, number 28. He's the one that was in the way in that throwing lane. But Carter Vassa was pleading to go for it on fourth down. But I think this time it's a little bit too deep. No. Yeah, big difference here. Fourth down and three. Now going against maybe the wind a little bit. Let's see the roll. It's going to be right, right around the 48-yard line. So the Trojans will get good field position here to get things going. And clock stops at 8.04 for over 175 years. New York Life has been helping families and businesses with their life, disability, and long-term care planning needs. Whether your current coverage is in place or you need a reviewing your options, please contact their office in Allentown to find the right plan to fit your needs. Call New York Life at 610-616-4430 today. So the Trojans with a 20-point lead and the ball. And that's a dangerous combination if you're, if you're playing against Parkland. Well, they took a timeout before and Bethlehem Catholic has to burn a timeout here, Matt, as well. It looks like they were missing Frederick Wu, or Mew, on the field. He's back here at the trainer getting taped up, trying to get back on the field. But it looks like that's what they were missing, one of their defensive linemen. That, that doesn't help it. Timeout brought to you by Culligan Water. Culligan Water asks, when is the last time you had your water tested? Get a free in-home water assessment from Reynolds Culligan. Visit yourwater.net for more information. That's yourwater.net. And high above Parkland, here on the visitor's side, we have a bunch of floats lining up big time. we got a preview here. I mean, people don't know what they're gonna, what they're going to see here. I'm going to take you back in the day, Matt. I was involved in this back in 1987. I was a driver for a homecoming here at Parkland. That's way back. I'm counting at least 21. Is that what it is? At least 21 floats is that the are set up right now. Is that the over-under? That's the over-under. Over-under, okay. So Parkland with the ball from the 49. Middle part of the field has been open and again connecting to Connor Johns for a Stu's Tire first down. And it's, it's so difficult because the defensive backs are pleading with the linebackers to get back, get in coverage, but they're being sucked up to the line of scrimmage because of the respect for Trey Tremba. So you're you're kind of at a, at a loss at what to do. You have both sucked up there trying to stop the run, but then you also need them in the pass. You know, you're, you're kind of caught in the middle. From the 27, looking to pass again. That one almost intercepted. I think it was Sutton. Yeah, Sutton came through. 
and, and unscathed, that, and he looked like he was just jumped in front of Jendel Sanchez. He did, and, and they're fortunate that Sutton doesn't pick that off because I think if he clears the one offensive lineman that was nearest him, I, he could be gone for a huge touchdown the other way. It'll bring up a second down from the 27. They'll go back to the ground in Tremba. Tremba gains a few before he gets tripped up on the play. First guy in there was Colin Peacock. And that's going to bring up an interesting third down. You're right at that the gray area. You know, are, are you outside field goal range? Are you not outside field goal range? Parkland's kicker has a big, strong leg. But I think this is two down territory. I think you're trying to pick this up on two downs to pick up the first down. Well, here's Tremba trying to spin through and get a little closer. He gets down to about the 20, Matt. 20, it looks 20, like 20. About maybe three yards, maybe four, fourth and four. Hmm. I mean, you're definitely not punting. And you're seeing the heavy package come on the field for, for Parkland. Well, this is a big play in two ways. First of all, if you're Bethlehem Catholic, you do not want to jump offside. Spang going to try to go quick, maybe try to get him to go. And you have Tremba matched up in the, the far receiver position. TJ Lawrence in the backfield. And then you have your, your group of receivers over here. Parkland's going to take a timeout, rethink what they want to do in this play. And this, this is an important play for them to, to be able to pick up this first down keep the drive going, and try to put some more points on the board. At the same time, Tremble was sitting on that outside, one-on-one -on -one coverage. One-on-one -on -one with Sutton, though. I mean, and that's, yeah, yeah, that's, 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 that's a good guy to have on him because um, I think that would be a great matchup. Timeout on the field at 624. Timeout brought to you by Culligan Water. Culligan Water asks, when is the last time you had your water tested? Get a free in-home water assessment from Reynolds Culligan. Visit yourwater.net for more information. So glad you could join us here for our D11sports.com Game of the Week, presented by St. Luke Sports Medicine. Game also brought to you by Michael R. Glovis, financial advisor at Morgan Stanley in Easton. We thank him for his sponsorship of the Game of the Week. For all your investment needs, call Michael R. Glovis at 610-559-6380, located at 101 Larry Holmes Drive, Suite 301 in Easton, PA. Morgan Stanley, Smith Barney, LLC, member SIPC. Well, Matt, if you are... Bethlehem Catholic right here. First of all, as I said before, you don't want to jump, right? No. That's the first thing, and give it to them. And you stop them here, you got six on the clock. You know, a, a touchdown here by Parkland will really put you back. So fourth and four for the Trojans from the 21. They lead by a score of 20 to nothing. Going to throw this one, and that one knocked away. That was a great defensive play by Carlos Perez. It was, and that's where wow. Spang wanted to go. He wanted to go to Leo Doberman. He was the inside receiver running a quick stick route just past the, the first down marker. But, again, Carlos Perez, he's been making plays a lot tonight for Bethlehem Catholic, Nothing, none bigger than that one right there. Well, Bethlehem Catholic did what they had to do, and they get the football back. And it comes with 6.20 on the clock. Not sure what the stoppage was there for. All right. We're back, I believe. Just resetting the play clock, it looks like. Here we go. Back underway from the 21. Vasa delivers. Right in the middle part. He has a receiver. Wow, that was so close. But how about the coverage? Real good coverage by, by Doberman. Leo Doberman. And he does. And again, that's a play that I've been, I've been talking to coaches about a lot recently. There's no face guarding in the play. There's no face guarding. He can run. He can put his arms up. But as a receiver, if you see your defensive back doing that, that's desperation. Slow down, stop, try to get vertical and contact him. You kind of you try to draw that pass interference or make a better play on the ball. But you can't just let you can't just wait for the ball. You have to stop and go attack the ball. Now they go on the ground, Sutton, and 
Sutton is going to be taken down on the play by Beidelman. But at the same time, that last play, after Carter uh, uh, couldn't come up with it, he came up slowly, walking back. I looked at the sideline, said he's okay. Uh, did not go back to the huddle. Uh, just is lined up as a wide receiver right now as they're really not in a huddle either way. But so hopefully we'll just keep our eye on number two. And you have to be careful here if you're Bethlehem Catholic. You're third down already, third and long again, and you don't want to give Parkland the ball back. But if you don't pick up this first down, you don't have a choice. You have to punt the ball away. Third down and 12 from the 19. Vasa has time to throw. Look it again and incomplete. So he, he, the last, in the beginning of the game, that was Sutton, by the way. In the beginning of the game, he was missing his receivers by probably five, six yards. The last two pass plays, he's missed them. Well, one went off the hands, and that one by about a yard and a half. So yeah, he, it's, it's almost there. Right they're, there. They're right there. Just a little frustration now. So as you mentioned, you don't want to give it up, but they are going to get the ball back here. Fryer from his own five-yard line takes the high snap. Here comes the pressure and gets a high one up. This ball will take a roll right to about the 45-yard line. And Parkland all night has had tremendous field position. They have been. And they haven't been in the end zone recently. The last two drives, if I'm not mistaken, haven't gone in the end zone. So we have to see you know, how much they want to push now. And I think now's a great time just to get back into the running game, try to eat up some of this clock, get to halftime. And in Parkland, you get the opening kickoff of the second half, so you have a chance to double up your points right now. They have 519. Here in a 20 0 lead for the Trojans. And if you're Bethlehem Catholic, it's kind of come to a stall, you know, uh, kind of after those three touchdowns, <laughs> excuse me, by the Trojans. But that being said, Parkland throwing on first down. That one, not much to Dobberman. It looked like Sutton was the first guy. I'm sorry, Devin Green Williams was the first guy out there to make the stop. Uh, just able to get by the block of Jendel Sanchez and and not allow him to block him on that quick pass out to the flat. Matt, Bethlehem Catholic has one timeout left. Again, you're asking the Golden Hawks defense to come up strong one more time. Again, if they can and have the ball, even if they go in the locker room at 20 to nothing, I think they'll take that. I think you're, I think you're right, too. Here's um, Tremba. And Tremba gets bottled up. Uh, and there's a flag at the end of that play. And with that coming in that late, you have to think maybe face, face mask. mask. Yes. I say they, they had him, and he was looking like he was down. Although it looked like they gave the holding call. Nope. Matt, you would have had a third down. Instead, you got a first down and 15 plus yards. Yeah, just it, it's everything that could go wrong for Bethlehem Catholic in this first half so far has, other than that one turnover they caused, um, just not a lot going their way so far. And they, and they can get back in the locker room, regroup, and come back out in the second half, but they're going to have to get back to something to get, get that offense going. From the 23. Looking to throw towards the corner of the end zone, incomplete. Was looking in the direction of Tremba. Clock so, stops at 4:12. I believe that was Devin Green Williams again on coverage. That's two plays in a row. He's come up big for the the Hawks defense. Parking will go three receivers to the near side. One up top, and that'll be Jendel Sanchez. Second down and 10 from the 23. They'll go towards Sanchez, and he makes the catch, but then he's wrapped up. And he stays like in bounds. Stays in bounds. Looks like he picks up maybe three, three and a half yards. All right, Matt, we're in the kind of same situation as 
the last time, right? So if you go to fourth down and three, are you still going for it, fourth down and four? I think you are. I think you're in that, sp that, that spot on the field where you do continue to go for it on fourth down. So third down and seven from the 20. And looking to throw, has a receiver, touchdown, it's Connor Johns. 20 yards, Parkland adds six more. Yeah, that showed a lot of patience in Luke's bank because he was about to take off and run, but he kept his eyes downfield. The pocket begins to collapse around him with the pressure there, and then he steps up and sees Johns coming from his right side, and at first I thought he didn't have enough on it, but that ball got there, and Connor Johns makes a great catch to get that touchdown for Parkland. Extra point. They're going to try to fake this one, but they're not going to get it. As Satoshi Rosenblum. Well, Rosenblum, Lee, uh, I don't know if you saw it, but Rosenblum had walked up to the offensive line first. Sometimes you're saying, hey, I'm going this way or whatever. So maybe they saw that or not. Well, but he has been doing that every time, I think, just to give them the protection and what they need to do. But that's definitely a fake that was called from the sideline. And Rosenblum just had nowhere to go and couldn't get outside of the grasp of the Bethlehem Catholic defense. So 26 to nothing is your score. When it comes to towing, trailer, or auto body repair, experience matters. Let Ironton Auto Body put their 70-plus years of experience to work for you. Locally owned and operated with 24-hour emergency towing and recovery services, along with 24-hour trailer repair. When something goes wrong, don't trust it to anyone. Look no further than Ironton Auto Body. Let our family take care of your family. Call 610-799-3241, Ironton Auto Body. All right, Matt, so we stand with 322, two first downs in the game, one by penalty for Bethlehem Catholic. Again, you haven't really had a chance to get a run back uh, too much. I mean, you would love to get your special teams involved here. You would. Um, and the thing you have to be careful about is mm -hmm. 322 left on the clock. You can't be three and out. You have to get something going a little bit, try to give your defense a little bit of a break. Sutton. Starts from the 10, it gets popped across the 35, up towards the 36 yard line. So good field position, one timeout and 3.15 on the clock. Next week, well first of all, tomorrow night, it'll be a nice sunny night. At sunny, Jay dry evening in Allentown. <laughs> at Jay Bernie Crumb Stadium in Allentown. Uh, we always are in outside in the middle of that platform. And I know Sean is looking forward to that already. It's not going to rain. Well, Matt just well, says that because he knows he's not going to be there. <laughs> Weathermen get paid to be wrong. <laughs> Think about it. They're, they're like baseball players, too. You get paid to be wrong. <laughs> looking to throw and has a receiver, but that one's underthrown as he was looking for Makai LaPierre. And that's another opportunity where the receiver can come back and attack the football. He has to be become a defensive back come back and attack the ball, try to make that catch, or at least pick up a pass interference. So second down and 10. Matt, you said you don't want to give him the ball back. But you know you're throwing here. I think you have to throw, but at the same time, I think you try to run the ball too and get that clock to come down. Just really impressed with that inside of the defensive line of Parkland. As I mentioned them before, number 54, Russell Clark, and number 57, Matt Dorsey, are just doing an excellent job taking up double teams, but at the same time, they're fighting off to get tackles of their own at the line of scrimmage or for no gain. So this is a big third and eight for Bethlehem Catholic with nobody in the backfield next to Vasa. 
Looking to throw middle part of the field. That one overthrown. Some of the receivers getting frustrated. They know they're that close to being there. They are. And that was uh, Bryce Medina. And it brings up a fourth down. And we have a holding. It looks like maybe a holding call against Bethlehem Catholic. There's a great battle on the other side um, on the defensive line and, and offensive line. Uh, Robbie Roosh, who we've been talking about a lot tonight, going up against um, number 64 for Bethlehem Catholic, Sammy I Ayash. I think that's a great matchup. Two physical players, two two uh, big time players on their teams, uh, just having a battle all night long. So fourth down, snap, and that one knocked away. So the ball was blocked. Matt, who was that? I, I that was I think it might have been eighteen. Eighteen. Who's not on my chart? Neither is mine. <laughs> we got a new new player. Let's, let's listen in, maybe to PA announcer. We'll get it because we I certainly mean, don't have number it. Number ten, Satoshi Rosenblum, who tried to get the extra or the two point conversion on the fake punt. He was in there along with it looked like number twenty, Nassim Adams was also in there. Mm. No PA announcer, so I, I don't feel. I don't think bad. they have it either. <laughs> I always call those guys Mr. X when you don't know. So the ball from the 33, 220 on the clock, 26 to nothing, Parkland. With the ball and the lead. Spang gets a block, tries to turn up field, but there's just nothing there, a lot of white jerseys. And Great think, job defensively by Bethlehem Catholic. I think that was a timing error on the offense. It looked like Spang wanted to hand it off to number three, Alex Kelchner, who was coming in motion, but he got there too early. And Spang didn't have the ability to catch the ball and hand it off to him, so he just decides to keep it. But by the time that timing's thrown off, the Bethlehem Catholic pursuit was already there. So that brings up a second and 13 for Parkland with 140, just under 140 left in the half. Spang. Patient throws and not going out of bounds because they have timeouts is Jendel Sanchez. And I think the Bethlehem Catholic defender looked like he slipped on the play. He was he was five yards down the field from where when Jendel Sanchez was so when he turned around. A Stu's tire first down and Parkland didn't know you know right they know they have you know they have timeouts left and uh, they got a minute fifteen. Bang to throw, far side, incomplete. No flag, no flags. No flag, that was good coverage. Spang tried to fit that in. Sutton over there, either Sutton or, no, I'm sorry. It's Devin Green-Williams in coverage for Bethlehem Catholic. He was in great position on Jendel Sanchez. The only thing Spang could do was throw it behind him, try to get that back shoulder pass, but uh, Green-Williams was not letting it happen and was there to help knock it down. So clock stops at 107. Ball sits at the 17-yard line for the Trojans with a 26-0 lead. Spang. And was trying to go through the middle, nothing there. Now waits, throws, and, and we have for a touchdown, right? A lot of laundry on the field. Yeah, laundry everywhere. That was Connor Johns that made the catch, but let's see. I mean, those flags are coming it, in from it, everywhere. And it's hard to tell. I mean, where they're at, you have to think it's pass interference. It looked like Connor Johns maybe got tangled up, but I don't know if it was with a Golden Hawk player. If these are against Bethlehem Catholic, the touchdown's good, but it looks like they're calling something against Parkland. Yeah. 
And it, and I wow. stayed corrected. It looked like Parkland was backing up. They were backing up. As if something was against them. So with 58 seconds, it becomes a 17-yard touchdown and, pass. And obviously Coach Spang. Ward not happy about this. Let's see if we can check the play after the extra point. So Parkland leads by a score of 32 to nothing. We don't have that replay, but it, you know, looked like they got tangled up in there, but flags were coming from everywhere. And then you had Spang in the middle, thought maybe there could have been a holding there before, but nothing called, touchdown Parkland. Extra point attempt is up and that one is good. So with 58 seconds on the clock, it's 33 to nothing Trojans. And that's not the way you wanted to have to end if you're Bethlehem Catholic. No, not at all. But, you know, Matt, that being said, there's still 58 seconds left. Parkland has a couple timeouts as well, so you're going to have to try to, you know, do something with the football. Yes, you are. And I think you come out and you try to run the ball and just keep that clock rolling. I think what Coach Ward is probably arguing right now is, you know, it looked like Spang was going to run. Did the Parkland offensive players turn and begin to block? And then when they saw him turn around to go back and pass again, they turn around, and then all of a sudden you're engaged with their players, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you get called for interference. You know, it, it's got to be one of those things like that. So 58 seconds on the clock. Tomorrow night, again, at J. Bernie Crumb Stadium in Allentown for Whitehall and Central Catholic. That one, always a good battle. I've done many of those throughout the years, including some overtime matchups. Next week, we'll have Bethlehem Catholic. They'll be on the road at Nazareth for another big matchup for the Golden Hawks. And you mentioned then they have Central Catholic to end things off. So three big, big games. This one from the eight. Sutton with a burst of energy. Sutton through the defense and gets up across the 35 towards the 37-yard line. And now things are getting out of hand. Now we're going right, to have so that some was issues. A late, that was a late flag. And I think we're going to get Bethlehem Catholic player with an unsportsmanlike penalty. He had the guy on the ground. And, and that's just it's frustration right now coming out. Well, if you're Coach Ward, you just want to get in the locker room at this point, correct? That's, yes. I was number seven white. So that will move them back here with 52 seconds on the clock. That interesting in the game on tomorrow night. On tomorrow night, how about that? Uh, the game tomorrow night because it almost has to be played. You know, depending on how the weather, how bad it is, you know, you, you can't really push it back because Whitehall plays Thursday. So if you move it to oh, Sunday, that's, that's that becomes, a, you know, a big difference because it's got they got a Thursday night game against Liberty. But and if if it's just rain, right? There's I a great pass play. play, and almost through the defense was Makai Lapierre for a Stu's tire first down. Their biggest play. Now again, they have one timeout left. Do they spike the ball here? And they're sending a lot of guys down the field, so that opens up space in the zone coverage. And LaPierre was the guy to benefit from that. And Vasa able to find him quickly. Yeah, taking a lot of time. They started the clock already. It's down to 35 seconds. Here comes the pressure. Throws this one again. That one in traffic. Incomplete. You're right, they did take a lot of time to get that play off if they were trying to push the ball down the field. Yeah, clock stops at 28 seconds. They do have the one timeout. So 
just under 30 seconds. And we asked Coach Ward at what distance is, would he feel comfortable kicking a field goal. And that's, that's just, you can't do that. Had to delay, yeah. So you get a great pass completion and and now you start to go backwards. And you just talk about, you know, maybe going into the locker room, even if you get a three, uh, you, you don't want a three. Obviously, you need a six, but you like to get anything at this point, you know, get some spirit up in the locker room. Yes, because we're, as we said, we're starting to see a lot of frustration come out. Uh, you're, you're nearing nine straight quarters not scoring a touchdown, not scoring a point. point. Looking to throw. This time he has a lot of time to throw and he has a lot of room, but he's taking a lot of time. They're coming back the near side and that one incomplete. Again, two Bethlehem Catholic players in the same location. Maybe and, got a little confusion there. And that play also, again, they snapped the ball with one second left on the play clock. After the delay of uh, After okay. a delay of game. It is. So 19 seconds on the clock. We do have that one timeout. But it's also third down. If you throw the ball and it's incomplete, you need to make a decision. Of, you have to do something on fourth down. But if you're incomplete here, there's a chance Parkland's getting the ball back. Third and 15. And there's your incomplete pass with 14 seconds left. And it'd be interesting to see what Parkland decides to do if well, they're gonna, I, I or would when think they get the ball back, I think, if they get the ball back technically with time on the clock. You can't run the ball here. No. Because if you run the ball and you get tackled quickly, at least if you drop back and pass, you have the opportunity to run some more time off the clock. Do you, do you punt the ball here? I, you know, I don't know. I don't think so, though. Yeah, I, I think don't, offensively I, I do you punt. give it a you shot. A better, yeah, I, I agree because you have a better chance of getting it blocked yeah. than anything else. And you've already had one blocked tonight. Correct. Timeout comes with 14 seconds left. Timeout brought to you by Culligan Water. Culligan Water asks, when is the last time you had your water tested? Get a free in-home water assessment from Reynolds Culligan. Visit yourwater.net for more information. That's yourwater.net. If you're just joining us here, D11Sports.com Game of the Week presented by St. Luke Sports Medicine. It is 33 to nothing on homecoming night. Maybe these uh, these homecoming, um, what do you call them? I don't know, floats. Floats? Yeah. Got lined up a little bit too early. I think they did. I hope they had right. them all gassed up because they've been sitting out there for about 20 minutes. I, it's been more than 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whose call it was, but. I don't know, but the one back here is the Parkland Boys Volleyball float and and they're they're being, they're pretty rowdy oh, they're having a good time back here oh you can hear them oh yeah yeah yeah. all right well, back to the action we got a game going on in front of us and behind us you don't usually get this fourth down and 15 from a 38 trips far side one receiver to the near side and that one is intercepted by tremba and so probably didn't want to intercept that one. He could have dropped it. He could have got the ball at the 42-yard right. line. But it came right into his hands. He said, I have to take it. And you're looking at – he's looking for Sutton on this. He's the single receiver down here. Vassal's looking for Sutton. He tries to look off, and he's just trying to fit that in behind Tremba. But Tremba makes a great play. If that is completed, that is going to be a first down for Bethlehem Catholic. But now if you're Parkland, do you try to go down the field? 10.2 seconds. Are you going to try to get something? I don't know. You're going to have to get behind the defense. You're either going to just take a knee here. And I think that's what we're going to see. They're going to take a knee. Because, again, they get the ball in the second half. Yep. That was a quick knee, too. Yeah. <laughs> it was like he took the knee before he had the ball. <laughs> so.
So the horn sounds here to end the half. It's homecoming festivities here at Parkland. They'll line up. They'll get ready. We'll get ready. We'll take a break. 33 to nothing is your score. You're watching our D11sports.com Game of the Week presented by St. Luke Sports Medicine back after this. St. Luke's knows that trust is the foundation of all relationships. It's earned over time. It's the type of relationship you should have with your healthcare team. While our healthcare needs are different, one thing is constant. St. Luke's is focused on building a lasting relationship with you, earning your trust and putting your well-being first. When it comes to great health care, trust is essential. St. Luke's, the care you trust, now more than ever. Do you suffer from nagging neck or back pain? The St. Luke's Comprehensive Spine Program can get you better, faster. We're easy to access and don't require a referral. We'll call you, discuss your symptoms, and put you on a path to healing with the most appropriate provider. Call 1-866-ST-LUKES, option 6, or fill out the online form. We are back, 33-0 is your score. It's homecoming night here at Parkland. Discover your smile by visiting Frill Ortho with two locations in McCungie and Whitehall. You want great care and service? Look no further than Dr. Frill and his experienced team. Frill Ortho serving Allentown and surrounding communities for almost 25 years. Schedule a consultation with Dr. Frill today by calling 610-820-5550. Frill Ortho does a tremendous job. Has been my kid's doctor for a bunch of years, all three of them, and doing just a, a great job with them, and uh, there's no one better. Hey, Stu's Tires, one of our sponsors, going right through here as we go down the field for some homecoming festivities and the band as well.
Student Association. Congratulations, you won best set tonight. Oh, 
with the Magic School Bus is now approaching. The Interact Club with Stuff Your Bus collected 5,983 total items. Thank you, Parkland High School. The Leo Club got first with 1,638 items, NHS with 1,139 items, and Miss Kaufman's class got third place with 1,004 items. The National English Honor Society with Dr. Seuss, oh, the places you'll go. The boys volleyball team voted best school spirit tonight in the float competition. Congratulations to the boys volleyball team. Nice job. Parkland TV with Ethan's Great Adventure voted number one float this evening. Congratulations, Parkland TV. You are number one tonight. The Pals Club with Toy Story to infinity and beyond. Leo Club. You were nominated for Best Costumes this evening. Congratulations to the Leo Club Best Costumes. The French Honor Society and French Club with their Paris Olympics 2024. The National Honor Society with Jumanji. Student Association with Best Performance this evening. Congratulations, Best Performance. Key Club with the Minions to the Moon. And now our homecoming court for 2023. The king and queen are named tomorrow night at the homecoming dance at 9 p.m. Our first couple for the homecoming court, queen nomination, Emily Davis, escorted by Xander Blickley. Tim Saad. Gabby Gavarotti escorted by Ethan Silver. Cameron Johns will be escorted by Connor Johns tomorrow evening at the dance. Chase will be escorted by Ollie Weza tomorrow night at the dance. Congratulations to all of you on the homecoming court. to the homecoming court 2023. Again, the king and queen will be named 
tomorrow evening at 9 p.m. at the dance. Thank you all for coming out this evening and supporting all the student athletes and these great clubs. Thirty-three to nothing as you get the homecoming court com coming through, and it was great to see Stu's Tires going in there, one of our sponsors, and Ironton Auto Body was fully uh, equipped, uh, driving all the floats for the most part around. I want to thank a bunch of our sponsors: Stu's Tires, located at thirty-nine thirty Independence Drive in Schnecksville. If you need a new tires, a wheel alignment, or an oil change, stop by Stu's Tire Center or give them a call at six one zero seven nine nine four two nine eight. Locally owned since nineteen eighty-one. Discover your smile by visiting Frill Ortho with two locations in McCungie and Whitehall. You want great care and service? Look no further than Dr. Frill and his experienced team. Frill Ortho serving Allentown and the surrounding communities for almost 25 years. Schedule a consultation with Dr. Frill today by calling 610-820-5550. Are you tired of not receiving the results you desire in your custody, support, or divorce cases? Attorney Frank J. Travato at Benner & Travato has a history of winning in and out of the courtroom for decades across the Lehigh Valley. So don't waste any more time and money elsewhere. Schedule a free consultation today with attorney Frank J. Travato at 610-867-3900. When it comes to towing, trailer auto body repair experience matters. Let Ironton Auto Body put their 70 plus experience to work for you. Locally owned and operated with 24 our emergency towing and recovery services along with 24-hour trailer repair. When something goes wrong, don't trust it to anyone. Look no further than Ironton Auto Body. Let your family take care of our family. Let our family take care of your family. Call 610-799-3241. And with that, we go down to the field right now. We got Derek Moore with one of our other student reporters. Derek? Down here with fellow student reporter Santos Martinez. Santos. 33 nothing. parking leads at half. What are your overall thoughts of the first half? I mean, this is what you expected from a great, you know, uh, a great team. Uh, I think they're number two in the state. They're really good, you know. Uh, I mean, you know, Becker could have come out and, and come back, but, you know, Parkland's just too good offensively and defensively. What does Becca have to do to get finally something going offensively? Shut out for quite a few quarters in a row. Oh, I mean, I just think they got to start running the ball a little more and passing a little more, too. You know, the short passes also matter in, this, in the game of football. It's a game of inches, so I feel like short passes can help them out a lot. Obviously, you've been involved for D11 for quite some time, as long as I have. What are your overall thoughts of D11 sports and what your experiences has been like? Uh, I mean, it's been great. You know, it's, it's a fun opportunity to get your name out there and, and to really experience sports from a different perspective. And you know, other than watching it as a fan, you know, it's good to be around. Uh, people like you and Al and, and everyone else in the broadcast, you know, it, it's fun. It's an opportunity you'll never forget. So if you want to join it, I suggest you do. Yeah, absolutely. You want to join it and get involved and contact your athletic director, our Dave, at d11sports.com. Al, Matt, back up to you. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Uh, you know, having uh, Santos and Derek, they've worked together. They worked some combines for us, for Ron Johnson, uh, you know, out in uh, you know Big 33 and some stuff for us. Uh, they just you know doing a continuing job. We always say uh, you know the job you do not only in high school when you're staying close to home. We try to keep you involved as well. Um, so we'll see what happens uh, with some more of our student reporters. Again, three of our student reporters from Parkland not in the house tonight. They had other plans, couldn't make it tonight. Emma Kushner. Um, one of them, Nick Rivera, on a college visit, by the way, and John Brubacher uh, with us as well. It's at halftime. It's 33 to nothing. For over 175 years, New York Life has been helping families and businesses with their life, disability, and long-term care planning needs. Whether you have a current coverage in place or in need of reviewing your options, please contact their office in Allentown to find the right plan to fit your needs. Call New York Life at 610-616-4430 today. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll get started for the second half of the game. Right now, it is 33-0 Trojans on top of Bethlehem Catholic. You're watching our D11Sports.com Game of the Week, presented by St. Luke Sports Medicine. Interested in a medical career? Consider St. Luke's if you want to be a doctor or a nurse. Based in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, we are the area's only four-year medical school and the largest provider of medical residencies and fellowships, and the country's longest-running school of nursing. Train at an organization that is nationally recognized in education, patient care, and quality. See why we are ranked the nation's number one teaching hospital. Where you train matters. The best doctors and nurses train at the best hospitals. St. Luke's University Health Network. 
At St. Luke's Orthopedic Care, you can trust us with your hands, feet, shoulders, hips, and knees. Because healthy bones and joints mean you can do more. You can trust us to recommend the right approach to care, including joint sparing treatments and therapies. And when surgery is the only choice, we offer options to help you heal faster, including technology-assisted joint replacements and muscle-sparing hip surgery. St. Luke's, the orthopedic care you trust, now more than ever. Thirty-three, nothing is your score. As we welcome you back here to Parkland High School, today's game also brought to you by Michael R. Globus, financial advisor, Morgan Stanley, located at 101 Lag Homes Drive, Suite 301 in Easton, PA. For all your investment needs, call Michael R. Globus at 610-559-6380. Morgan Stanley Smith Barney LLC, member SIPC. St. Luke's is the region's largest sports medicine provider, covering more than 200,000 student enrollment and 40,000 student athletes in Pennsylvania and New Jersey, covering eight counties and providing the most comprehensive advanced treatment for athletic injuries. St. Luke's offers athletic training, orthopedic care, physical therapy, and concussion management, plus sports performance training for individual athletes and teams. During these extraordinary times, you can trust St. Luke's Sports Medicine to provide extraordinary care. Now, with that, as we get ready for the start of the third quarter, your thoughts of the first half. I mean, if for Parkland, you, you know, it was a near perfect first half. They had the turnover, um, and they had, a, I think, one drive stalled, if not two maybe, um, but just playing very well offensively, defensively, special teams-wise. Uh, Bethlehem Catholic, again, it's, the, it's offensively, can they get a spark going because they're putting their defense in some tough situations. They need to get something going, and you heard from Santos in, in some of his thoughts. Get that ball out of the hands quickly. Get it to your receivers. Try to make some plays out on the perimeter uh, and, and see what you can do with that. Uh, but they, they're going to have their hands full in the second half, trying to get something going as they start on defense first. Matt, with that, before the second half starts, a shout-out to A.J. Monsman, <laughs> Tim Monsman's son. He's uh, at East Stroudsburg University right now, and he's uh, – He's got he's got us all dialed in. He did, AJ. I got all those texts. I got, Al read them to me. I, I agree with you. I just <laughs> thought maybe maybe you, you try to get some points on the board. It's all fair and game in the first half, AJ. You know that. So we want to give him a shout out. Doing a great job. He's with us last time for the Nazareth game, um, and th- and excited you know to see what he's doing up there as well. I thought it was great hearing from his dad though about how frustrated he got with the, the fourth down fake punt call that he's like, oh, Dad, what are, we, what are they doing? Mm-hmm. You, know, you know, everyone, everyone, you know, you try to make some, some calls, you try to get a little little cute, get ahead of yourself, and then all of a sudden, nope, not happening. Well, we'll see what happens here in the second half. And you mentioned before, you know, Parkland gets the football back uh, to start the second half. Right after this kickoff, I'll take you through the scoring in the first half as we are underway. Fryer, that's a short kick, seeing if they can catch him off guard. They do not. Luke Spang, a one-yard touchdown run at the 834 mark, made it 7 to nothing. Trey Tremba, two-yard touchdown run at the 423 mark, made it 14 to nothing. That was your score after one quarter of play. Second quarter, Trey Tremba goes eight yards for a score, uh, made it 20 to nothing as they try to go for a two-point conversion. Uh, Luke Spang, a 20-yard touchdown. Oh, excuse me, that was a, they missed the extra point, right? And then a 20-yard touchdown um, from Luke Spang to Connor Johns made it 26 to nothing. Then a 17-yard touchdown from Spang to Connor Johns, the second one, to make it 33 to nothing. So if you're counting at home, Luke Spang with two touchdown passes and one touchdown run. Trey Trembo with two touchdown runs. Here, Parkland starts from the 38-yard line and the pitch. And a guy eager to get his hands on the football, Reed Andrush, we talked about him in the first half. Yes, and it's a nice way to get it started, trying to get out there, get him going a little bit. And you really, you know, you ha- you want to be careful as you acclimate him back into the game. Uh, this week was the first week back practicing, <laughs> and Coach said he had to talk to Reed about cal- calming him down. He's out there. He's just hitting kids, and it's taking him too physical in practice. Like, Reed, we need to calm down. He's like, Coach, I haven't played in seven weeks. I'm ready to go. <laughs> On the ground, they'll go again, and they go for the strip. They don't get it, and now quickly a third down. That was number 66, Jacob Lance, coming from the backside end. 
crashes down and pulls down Andres from behind. So, Matt, as you start the third quarter, you don't, you know, you don't bring out Tremba, and you give other opportunities here. Do we see that the rest of the game? I don't know if we see that the rest of the game. I think it, you know it's a fine line. You have to be careful because you know you're right at that that area where you could get the mercy rule going, and I think that's when those guys get pulled when that that clock starts going. But until then, I think you have to play it. A lot of time, but no one open, throws it in traffic, and that catch is made right around the 45-yard line, so a couple yards short of the first down. And coming up with that one is Jake Beidelman. And Jake Beidelman had to, he not only had to contend with the three Bethlehem Catholic defenders on him, but also the umpire was right there as well. So Alex Ke Kelchner will come in and punt. First time tonight, I believe, for Parkland punting the football. Am I correct? I believe you are correct, yes. Oh, Tyler Ward comes flying across. He calls a timeout. timeout Only 10 on the field, I believe. I th Four, I'm eight, I nine. Count, no, it's 11. I count 11. I'm not sure. I, I went to count right away because it's the first thing I was thinking. It, it's same with me. And I... And I counted 11, and I just wonder if it was a matter of they wanted to be sure if they try to run a fake. Parkland has thrown, shown a fake in the extra point, but they did. They do have 11. Timeout comes with 9.52 on the clock, brought to you by Culligan Water. Culligan Water asks, when's the last time you had your water tested? Get a free in-home water assessment from Reynolds Culligan. Visit yourwater.net for more information. So they burn a timeout here early. Okay, but they burn a timeout when they had 11 on the field, and now they have 10. No. Yes. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. You are correct. So you called the timeout with 11 to put 10 back out there. And that one's going to be a tough play. No flag. Slow getting up, and look at the ball right around the 25-yard line. Glad you could join us tonight for our D11Sports.com Game of the Week presented by St. Luke's Sports Medicine. I want to thank John Hoth, Ken Sidlow, Greg Lay, and everyone there at St. Luke's. Also, shout out to Sean Riley, Sports Fan Base Network, doing a great job pushing all the buttons. High atop here. We're I mean, not all the way up top. I mean, up top is way up top. Up top is all the way up top side. over on the other side, yes. That's that's a distance. So we're on the home side. Uh, that used to be the home side, now the away side. Getting some fumes, though, coming from behind <laughs> us. <laughs> I don't know if you're smelling it. All those Ironton auto body trucks. <laughs> so first down, they... Cape Vassa pass complete. Number two, Carter Vassa. Vassa to Vassa from short yardage. It puts him about second and five, and that's where Bethlehem Catholic wants to be offensively this half. They want to be in that. They don't want to find themselves behind the sticks and, and going second and long, third and long. So second down and four. And trying to go up the middle, nothing there. So bring up a third down here. And I believe that was TJ Lawrence come from the middle linebacker spot. He's coming up to make the tackle uh, and kind of left his feet to just kind of grab Sutton any way he could to bring him down. Matt, take us through, you know, right now, Coach Ward, what he's maybe thinking and the players thinking they haven't scored. You know, that's two games they were shut out. That's eight quarters plus two more. And we're into the third here, 10 quarters plus. It's 10 quarters right now that they're looking at. I think they're looking to find some rhythm, something to, to, to build on. Uh, and they've had opportunities. They really have. Um, and here's and you, you that's said it. part of it, too. You, you just said it. Here's the opportunity. It was a good pass. Uh, probably going to be caught, you know, nine out of ten times by <laughs> Makai Lapierre. Instead, they're going to be punting the football away. And – you know, Coach had mentioned it. Coach Ward had mentioned it earlier in in the game when we were talking to him. And 
he said, you know, we're ju- we're right there, but the mistakes we make get magnified because of the opponents we're playing. And I think you definitely see that tonight. You know, Parkland has made Bethlehem Catholic pay for every mistake that that they've had. So fourth down and five. And this punt will take a positive roll for the Golden Hawks all the way down to the 31-yard line. That's where Parkland will take over. So, Matt, we are in week eight. Um, You look at those, again, 6A standings coming into tonight, you know, where we are. And, you know, you're going to see some – we always say you're going to see that shuffling and, and, and teams moving around, but, you know, Right now, the only team in the 6A class that has clinched is Parkland to get in. Um, two teams in the 3A in Northwestern and Palmerton are in. And, <laughs> excuse me, Southern Lehigh is also in. T- and after tonight, we're going to see a couple more teams get in. Correct. And Palmer, or Palmerton having a big lead right now against North Schuylkill at home going into the second half. This is our first look at T.J. Lawrence, the freshman running back. We talked about him defensively, but the Parkland coaching staff is excited about what he can do offensively as well, uh, being you know, probably the next guy in line after Tremba graduates and moves on to, to play at Army next year. Clock down to 740 and counting. Really quiet here at Parkland right now. It really had, got quiet this second you, half. You know, you had the homecoming festivities um, that, you know. Still have not all fully been parked. I wonder <laughs> if they'll be fully parked by the time the game's over. It took them a while. Second down and four from the 37. And that one a little bit wide. Luckily not picked off if you're, if you're Parkland. Yeah, Devin Green Williams has been playing very well out there tonight, uh, making a lot of good plays. That time he beats Jendel Sanchez to the spot and nearly comes off with with an interception. So third down and four from the Trojans up 33 to nothing here in the third quarter. That one well overthrown was looking in that direction to Jendel Sanchez. Yeah, that ball sailed on Spang. It wasn't even close to Sanchez. Uh, Just kind of looked like it came out high and then just stayed high. Uh, We haven't seen this twice in a row. Three and outs for Parkland. High snap and the punt. And we'll see the Bethlehem Catholic offense come onto the field right from the 31-yard line. And that's been two quick turnarounds offensively for both teams, just quick two quick three and outs for Parkland and one for Bethlehem Catholic to start the second half. So Bethlehem Catholic will take over at 7.05 on the clock. And, Matt, as you – you know, this game kind of out of reach unless something absolutely dramatic happens, right? So you're building for next week. But, yeah, you got to think that, you know, your first priority is, you know, you want to get some points. And you want to see if you can get it. And However, they're going for the run here. I mean, Parkland's all over them all night long. And waiting the wings will be Nazareth next week. We'll have that one on D11 Sports. Yeah, and like we talked about, those – this last second half of the season for Bethlehem Catholic is not, you know, for the faint of heart. It's going to be a challenge, and it has been a challenge each and every week. Uh, but they need to get back, you know, after this game. get out. They're getting out of here healthy, which is good right now, and we want to keep it that way. Uh, you just need to get back, get ready to regroup. I mean, you, know, you have to tip your hat to Parkland, and this is ne- far from over still, but – you came up against a, a team that really has played nearly flawless mm-hmm. tonight. That's the far side throws, and that one incomplete. 
And at some point, offensively, what they need to do is they have to get back to getting the ball completed. I think that's what's been missing tonight. They've been off. They've been missing the guys. They've been drop. They've had drop passes. Um, you, you talked about earlier a couple overthrows here and there. Uh, just getting that back. But you know, as Coach Ward said too, Caden Vassa, your leader at the quarterback position, is a sophomore. Mm-hmm. Carter Vassa, your top receiver, a freshman. So they're going to make young mistakes. Um, it's just a matter of you need to get them to mature. You know, you're eight weeks in. You're no longer a sophomore. You're no longer a freshman. You've played multiple snaps at this level. You need to be ready to go. The pump and then the takedown was looking to pump there, but instead, Bidelman came flying through. And there's a player down. Yeah, it looks like it's maybe number 90 for Parkland, Stephen DeSmet. Uh, but you get a good look, the pass rush. Uh, as Vasa's looking, this near side gives a pump fake. They run a little game between him and 54, Russell Clark. I'm sorry, it looks like it was number 80, J- Javen Battle. Mm. I think it's hard I may, to see. Yeah, I got rolled up on the yeah. ankle. So six minutes on the clock. Again, scoring. In the first half, Luke Spang, a one-yard touchdown run. Trey Tremba, a two-yard touchdown run. <clears throat> and Tremba goes from eight yards. That made it 20 to nothing. Spang, a 20-yard touchdown pass to Connor Johns. Made it 26 to nothing. And then seven, <coughs> excuse me, a 17-yard pass from Spang to Connor Johns. And that's where we stand, 33 to nothing here in the third quarter. But, Matt, you know, Coach decides that, you know, let's go out and give a couple other players the opportunity because you're going to need these guys, mm-hmm. you know, and, and you, you don't know when, but, you know, in a game like this, that's 33 nothing. It's a good opportunity to get them involved and see if they can get some rhythm and maybe get three, four, five plays in a row and get them in the mix. It is, and you, you definitely want to do that. And you're not – defensively, they haven't thrown them all in. In offensively, they haven't either. They've been bringing some guys in. We saw Reed Andrush getting some opportunity. We saw T.J. Lawrence get opportunities. You want to see them – go and get meaningful time so that you know, like you said, when that time comes, you have the ability to put them in and not miss a beat with your offense or defense. Yeah. Well, he's going to be helped helped off in Javen Battle, a 6-foot, 170-pound junior, senior, excuse me. But not putting that much weight there on that ankle, so hopefully he's okay. Mike Belair has been with the staff for a long time. He graduated back in 87 <laughs> with me. He's, you know, a big part of this Parkland staff through some coaches as well. Fourth down and 16. And Parkland will take over from their 41-yard line. I'm telling you, you here, anything's yep, uh, dropping here. This place is quiet. This is absolutely quiet. I mean, it was real loud at halftime with homecoming and just uh, kind of uh, just turned a little bit uh, for sure. And that's always a tough thing when you come out with that 20-minute halftime. It just, it, it's a long time where you're just sitting around. When it comes to towing, trailer, or auto body repair, experience matters. Let Ironton Auto Body put their 70-plus years of experience to work for you. Locally owned and operated with 24-hour emergency towing and recovery services, along with 24-hour trailer repair. When something goes wrong, don't trust it to anyone. Look no further than Ironton Auto Body. Let our family take care of your family. Call 610-799-3241. Spang pumping, and then he gets hit as he throws. The ball hangs up there, and it's still caught by Johns for a Stu's tire first down. Wow. They had Connor Johns. He was he had his guy beat. They had a, a quick hitch and go. Spang gives him the fake, gives him the pump fake, draws the defender up, but then not able to get everything into that. And Johns makes a fantastic adjustment coming back for the ball for and making the catch. First first down of the second half. They send this one across and the reception is made. So Doberman makes another catch. One thing you like about Spang is getting a lot of players involved. You know, we've seen that before. 
Um, and, you know, just just really sees the field so well. And, again, credit to the offensive line, right? He get, They get the Absolutely. time. Absolutely. And it, I, if I count correctly, that's five different receivers with a catch tonight. Second down and four from the 27. And driving straight through is T.J. Lawrence, a freshman at 5'11", buck 90. And I think that's going to be enough for the first down. So Stu's tire first down. And as you can expect, Parkland not in any hurry. We'll be joined by Matt Marcus tomorrow night. And they're going for the end zone for this one, going up and a leap. And was that intercepted? Oh, no, they no, say incomplete, incomplete and out of bounds. Out. Incomplete pass. Incomplete pass, out of bounds. But it looked like Bethlehem Catholic came down with the ball. Yeah, that's what they were looking at. It looked like they, that it was the Golden Hawks, Devin Green-Williams, that – was flashing his arms, and he had the ball in his hand. Take a look. I mean, Jendel Sanchez does a nice job trying to go up and get the ball over top of him. That's an INT, right? Oh, that looks tough. That looks very that was, that's close. That's closer than you think. That looks much closer than I thought it was. I thought he may, have, he may have had that ball in the back of the end zone. That was Lawrence, and he pushes yeah. forward, right? Lawrence, that looked right. very close. I mean, it was right on that end, that end line. Yeah, and we couldn't see where the feet were, but it looked like he was, you know, that was if that was, that was it, out, not by much. But they no. called it an incomplete pass, right? Well, they called it incomplete because he was out of bounds. Out of bounds, right, okay. So that, I mean, that would go with either the interception or reception. But so, right, and then now we're out qu quickly at a third down. Yeah, third down and eight. And he floats this one over to Lawrence. Lawrence comes towards the near side, pushes forward. And they tackle him forward. Should be enough for a first down. It's going to be close. Yep. yep. Stu's tire first down. And they get that one inside the 15-yard line. They're going to mark it at the 12. And keep it on the ground. Not much there this time. Yeah, and Bethlehem Catholic defensively in the middle has really solidified that middle and hasn't let Parkland get much push or much room to run up the middle. They've been having success running wide off tackle, getting the ball out on that flare pass to the running back and, and throwing the ball, but they haven't been able to get much up the middle. Throw this one towards the back of the end zone. Johns leaps up and incomplete. And on the coverage was number two, Carter Vassa for Bethlehem Catholic. Uh, but the ball thrown kind of too far where Johns wasn't able to bring it down inbounds. Northwestern Lee keeps their winning ways going. They beat Banger in a big one, 35-6. to six. And Catasauqua rolling right now against Panther Valley. Speaking of rolling, rolling out and throwing. Whoa, what a catch. Diving forward, no signal here. They're going to mark this probably at the one-yard line. That was a great catch. And there's a flag on the play, it looks like, too. Legal man downfield. Mays leading their game 21 to 6 against Liberty. So that negates that big pass play as that one comes back. So 
So under three to play, 33 seconds remaining. Excuse me, 33 nothing to score, 252 remaining. They go trips, Spang looks. He's got a couple receivers in that direction and a flag is thrown. I think they're going to catch Kusar, number 21 for Bethlehem Catholic with pass interference. He was in coverage on Doberman. Pass interference, defense number 21, 15-yard penalty. So we'll replay third down again. <laughs> I was just going to say, when you move that ball, I and let, something must have happened before we get that on the screen. But I don't know if you can play that cleaner. That's a tough one. So, so they move this down to about the 12. This is where we were about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> In another a big contest between the Colonial League and the Skuka League, unbeaten Palmerton leading after three quarters. It's 40 to 24 now against North Schuylkill. And Palmerton, Palmerton and and uh, Northwestern not meeting Don't in the regular meet, season. Yes. Spang to throw, rolls, has time if he wants to throw it. He does, and he throws it in for the touchdown. So the touchdown pass to Jendel Sanchez from 13 yards. And that's a nice job by Jendel Sanchez reading his quarterback on the scramble drill because he's originally running to the inside, but once he sees Spang break to the outside, he breaks to the sideline as well. And the defender, who has been having a great night out there, Devin Green-Williams, just slips, and that's how Sanchez, Sanchez gets open, and Spang puts the ball where it needs to be for the touchdown. Extra point. That is up, and that one is through. And with 2.38 on the clock, Parkland is now up 40 to nothing, and the mercy rule will go into play. Again, Bethlehem Catholic now 10 quarters. And scoreless, yes. Still looking to try to get something. I mean, they have time here, but when I say they have time, they have two possessions at the most, you know, knowing that, you know, the way the Correct, game's going to go yes. with it. And you have to think when Parkland – when they do get the ball back, they're going to, whether they keep it on the ground or not, you have to think they're probably going to run the ball more than more than anything, and the clock's going to run anyway. So Spang with a, a big night. Three passing touchdowns and a rushing touchdown. Not bad for another night of work. Not at all. Not at all. And we'll get a lot of new faces probably make their way into the game as well. So 2.38 on the clock, 40 to nothing. Parkland in control. Parkland looking to go to 8-0 on the season. Matt, we've seen them now twice. Um, once against Nashville, which was probably, you know, maybe our best game that we've had. I mean, we've had some good ones too. Um, but that was, you know, one that went down to the wire um, for sure. It was, and I think that's uh, probably a game we a lot of people think we're going to see again in the playoffs. But, it, but like you said, and here could be a spark that Bethlehem Catholic greatly needs. Yeah, Sutton. It's Sutton. And still, the only thing that brought him down, really the only thing that stopped him was the sideline. Mm -hmm. And now we have a flag on the play. I think they're bringing this one back on a hold. Yeah, we're going to come they, back. See, those are the ones that always bother me anyway. You know, it, it's you're going through it again. Sometimes you probably don't need a hold, right? And he's like, I was going through anyway. Don't worry <laughs> about it. I got it. So instead of getting this one at the Parkland 47-yard line, depending on where that hold came, they'll probably move that one back to at least Looks their like own 40, right? Back to maybe the 34 is where we're going to get back to. Let's see if Matt's correct. 
Matt will be officiating the JV game on Monday. Let's see. You said 34? I said the 34. Actually, 36. Uh, I'm sorry. Just, 36. I thought you were a math guy. I was on the wrong side of the line. I thought you were a math guy. What happened? 36. Ugh. You failed us up here. And you want to be in that, had the extra microphone up here for yeah, you. Yeah, how about it? Not going to happen. Ball gets loose on the ground. Not sure who came up with this. I think Bethlehem Catholic's still on it. They are. You know, Vasa was trying to break free of the rush, but carried the ball low, and, and Parkland defender able to knock it free. Left the ball in the play. It'll be second and 14, Golden Hawks. So they lose some yards there. Second down and 14 from the 32. Inside two minutes to play here in the third quarter. Man got away with a hold. Instead, Asa has some space to run down the sidelines. And he'll get that one up to about the 39-yard line. And he'll bring up a third down. And it puts them in a position where they potentially have an opportunity to pick up this first down. So third down and seven from the 39. I'm going to say this, I believe, is going to be the last play of the quarter. I think you shall be correct. And that one skips incomplete. Was looking for Bryce Medina. Bring up a fourth and seven for the Golden Hawks. They don't have to punt it. I was going to say, they don't have to punt it, so let's see if they do or don't. So clock winding down, inside 12 seconds. They have decided to punt the football. Oh, and real this nice one punt. is going to be taken at the 18-yard line and fielded there by Alex Kelchner. And that will wrap up three quarters of play, 40 nothing. Parkland in control. You're watching our D11sports.com Game of the Week presented by St. Luke Sports Medicine. I believe that St. Luke's and our coaches are going to provide the safest and most comprehensive training environment that a student athlete would want. Hopefully they, they come to us and, and they leave and there's not another need to be filled. We provide it all. There's not another orthopedic group, sports medicine group, healthcare system in the country that has high level, degreed certified, years of experience. On the ground. Go. Every coach, every parent, they they want what's best for their student. Okay, they want what's gonna help them be the best version of themselves. And so that's what we can provide. I don't think there's anything in this area that can rival it. Good look at the Parkland Trojans as we get back to the action here, fourth quarter. Matt, your your thoughts through three. I, I think I said it before, it's just a fantastic game by Parkland so far um, in, in all aspects, offense, defensively, special teams, doing a, a real nice job in executing their game plan. Um, for Bethlehem Catholic, I think it's just a matter of you know, they're, they're just missing. And I think that's that's how Coach Ward told us mm -hmm. prior. Just they're just missing on some things, and they have some youth, and and they have to grow through that. But no coach is going to make that as an excuse. They just have to get back and keep keep working, keep getting better. They can't get frustrated. However, offensively, you know you want to get something going. Nasri on the keeper. Blake Nasri, the freshman in there at quarterback for Parkland. No 
Score out there, Palmerton now leading 48 to 24 early in the fourth. Looks like Phillipsburg is going to pick up another victory over Union. Well, They're leading 27 to 6 right now. Well, if they get the win, from what I'm told, they would be uh, potentially get up to three home games starting the playoffs next week. Or two weeks from now, excuse me. They have one last game uh, in the regular season next week, which is a winnable kind of game. But the one tonight was the one that could get them three home games. We had them earlier this year against Ridge. And they're at the point. They're a little banged up right now. They need to get healthy for Frank Duffy to make that playoff run. Underway here in the fourth quarter. So bring up a third down and eight from the 25 for Parkland. If you're just joining us, all those festivities happened earlier with the homecoming and saw a lot of floats. How many floats, Matt, what you have? I had 23. Okay, 23 floats. 23 floats, and as quickly as those floats were up, they're they down. have all been dismantled. <laughs> <laughs> that quickly, they're all dismantled and the trucks are leaving. They completely cleaned up. The garages are spotless. Spotless. They're spotless. Oh, um, pr impressive. Wow. I have to give a shout-out to my, my oh, school here. Here we go. Oh, the shout-out. My out. school here, Voorhees. Voorhees High School in New Jersey in the fourth quarter, winning 42-7. to seven. My guys, I'll see you back in school on Monday. There you go. Matt's got a shout-out each week. I, I Listen, that's, we should just make it a segment. <laughs> Matt's shout-out. <laughs> <laughs> Matt's minute. <laughs> Fourth down and seven from the 26 for Parkland. I used to do those games years ago, Matt. Um, Voorhees and Warren Hills and, mm -hmm. and it's, that's Belvedere. A, speaking of that, we had, we had discussed that prior. Warren Hills, unfortunately, had to cancel their game this weekend due to injuries and not having enough players to safely play that game that they had, trying to get healthy for their next game against Hackettstown next week, uh, and then, then possibly into the playoffs. So 9-14 on the clock. 40 to nothing is your score. Quite possibly the last possession here. Pine Grove picks up, picks up the win over Salisbury tonight, 31 0. And that's the frustration that we talked about earlier. And it, it's not necessarily the score, but it's the frustration that we're not able to get things going offensively, and, and it's just a struggle. You know, and you just get the, you, the emotions get the best of you. Catasauqua leading Panther Valley 48-6. to six. Here's Sutton. Sutton busts to the outside. And we'll get a Stu's tire first down before he's driven out of bounds around the 47. And you, get to, you get a look at what Sutton's able to do, how elusive he is. Um, not, not a good sign seeing him next to number 72, his teammate. Um, 72 for Bethlehem Catholic comes in. Small Six guy, four, two hundred ninety pounds, and then Sutton lines up or is walking next to him at five seven. Just looks like a big difference, but he's elusive, he's powerful, and he's able to run the ball well. Just you haven't been able to see it tonight. From the forty-seven of the Trojans, and well, someone missed a the block there, flying on through, making that block was Julius Reyes. Reyes at 6'1", 190. I mean, he came untouched. He did come untouched, and that was a miscommunication somewhere up front. Because he came right from the wow. left side. It looks like Oof. the offensive tackle did not step down to take that inside gap away. And 
Reyes said, if you're not going to take it, I'm going to. And he's make it pay, he pay for it. Pottsville, 48-14, winner over Wilson. Blue Mountain leading Saucon Valley 40-14 to in the fourth quarter. So a lot of teams putting up some points tonight. Yep. And here as well, Parkland leading 40 to nothing. And trying to get away, he's going to have to try to run for this one. And gets taken down at the 48-yard line. Back to about the original line of scrimmage. And he comes up hobbly. Is that a word, hobbly? I don't hobbling. know if it is. I don't think that's a word. Hobbling. Hobbling. Hobbling, hobbling not hobbly, huh? <laughs> can I use it? Can I go Webster? You, you can try if you want to. <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. No. Good old wobbly. Man, that's got to be a concern, though, too. I mean, he's he, – yeah, it, it is because you look on their roster, they only have two quarterbacks listed. Yeah, and they're, they're, they're making – And it looks like they're going to make the change, change and bring in the second one. Axel Burkhart. But the two quarterbacks, one's a sophomore, one's a freshman, those are the only ones listed on their roster. Timeout comes at 7.05 o'clock. Timeout brought to you by Culligan Water. Culligan Water asks, when's the last time you had your water tested? Get a free in-home water assessment from Reynolds Culligan. Visit yourwater.net for more information, yourwater.net. 7.04 on the clock. And let's see if they do make that change. They will. Correct? Yeah, it looks like Alex... Yep. Burkhart is coming on at quarterback. And he had been over here warming up extensively in the first half. So he'll get an opportunity to run the offense. So Burkhart's going to throw for the first time tonight, or is he? And he shows some versatility as well. You know, as he stepped up in the pocket, he kept his eyes down the field, kept looking to see if he can find a receiver, uh, just not able to, but picks up some good yardage on third down, giving him a manageable fourth down. And I think there's no question if you're Coach Ward, you are not going to punt this at all. Because you know this potentially, as you said, could be the last time you touch the ball this game. So I like the option. Give Alex Burkhardt a chance. Give him an opportunity. Let him throw the ball. See what happens. Yep. If he can throw, that pressure's been there all night. Throws in the middle part of the field. Has a receiver, and it's complete. And that is complete to Carter Vasa. So first and goal from the seven-yard line. Take a look. And this is a very well-thrown football, too. And he's not warmed up, by the way. You know, he puts the ball right where only his guy can get wow. it. Just perfect spot for Carter Vassa to come down with that catch. So Stu Tires first down with 545 and counting. Again, what you want to see here for Bethlehem Catholic is to stop that, that scoreless yes, streak. Yes, exactly. You want to see some points get on the board. Axel Burkhart, 6'1", 170 pound freshman. Three receivers near side. And they hand that ball off, but nowhere to go for Justin Martinez. Just Martinez, a freshman, getting some action alongside Burkhart as well. Two freshmen in there. Carter Vass on the outside of freshman. So you have a lot of youth, like counting on their roster. 31 players on their roster, either freshmen or sophomores. And a lot of them have been pushed into action at different points in time throughout this season. So second and goal from the eight. And taken down on the play. And that's another sack by Reyes. Again, coming free off that defensive end spot. You see him on the right side. He steps up, stands up. And the offensive line and running back not able to get their hands on him to slow him down. And that's his second sack of the game. 
mean, he's pushing Robbie Roosh for a defensive yeah. player of the game. Yeah. So third down. And now let's add a batted ball to that play, wow. too. How about that? Again, you come into the game, you're playing. Help out. You know, we had Santos Martinez, uh, you know, one of our student reporters down there with uh, Derek Moore, um, you know, at halftime. And his brother, Justin, just coming off the field, had his first carry of the game, number 27. And we'll, here we'll see a field goal attempt. You know, you want to try Matt, any way possible right? to get I, some points. I agree. And Because he, he talked about this in the two last games, that he could have went for a field goal, did not. So what is that, 32? 32-yard field goal attempt here. With Burkhardt at the, at the hold. The kick is up, and that one is good. So a 32-yard field goal. Matt, they needed something like that. Well, the big picture, you may not see what they what they wanted. So three minutes on the clock. Matt, if you think about it, mercy rule went into effect. This game's longer with the mercy rule than it without because of the change of possession. Correct. Change of possession, and it, it did get kicked in until late in the third yep. quarter as yep. well. This goes to show you Coach Mossman and his coaching staff. You know, when you get in these games and you get up big here, you have your starting kickoff team, your starting kickoff return team, well chosen to put out their backup kickoff return team because you, you don't want those starters who haven't really been playing to get back out there and, mm -hmm. and have to play cold and then potentially pull a muscle. From the 16-yard line. That one on the return by Nassim Adams, a sophomore. That's a nice return by Adams as well. I'm guessing I'll see him on Monday. I'm sure. I guess I'll see him in the JV game on Monday. He's going to make me earn my keep running up and yeah. down the sideline there potentially. For over 175 years, New York Life has been helping families and businesses with their life, disability, and long-term care planning needs. Whether you have a current coverage in place or in need of reviewing your options, please contact their office in Allentown to find the right plan to fit your needs. Call New York Life at 610-616-4430 today. So you see some New Jersey's on the field for Bethlehem Catholic. Okay, player X yeah. at quarterback for Parkland. Oh, yeah. it, it, I went back, and I just want to say I checked my email. I checked my email from you. I checked the Parkland roster that was sent. No 18 on the roster. And I know I just caused us not to hear <laughs> <laughs> who they said <laughs> number 18 was. He's a mystery man. Mm. I mean, it can't, it's, there's not even a not 19. Even, I know, I know. <laughs> I mean, could it be 12? No, because we called him earlier. Okay. We can't give you what we don't have. <laughs> Corsa, your ball carrier. Got that by Caldwin of the Golden Hawks.
So 115 on the clock. A couple more snaps here for the Trojans. Looking to throw, and that one is complete for a Stu's Tires first down into the hands of Satoshi Rosenblum. I got it. Go ahead. Osmani Guzman. How'd you get it? I listened to the, <laughs> the PA announcer. All right. <laughs> so he must be wearing 18, not 11. So he's we a saw, junior. We, we saw him play last year. He did come in against a the, little in bit the last year. In the yes. Central Catholic game that we brought. That was when Spang was hurt. Yep. And they were using the Kai Bullock yep. as well at Correct. quarterback. And they do have to run one more play. I mean, you could take the delay game. And the clock's still going to run. I'll snap it here. Guzman takes a knee, and that will do it, ladies and gentlemen. Your final score, Parkland 40, Apple Catholic 3. So Parkland wins this one by the score of 40 to 3 as the horn sounds here in Orfield. Parkland improves. So 8-0 for Parkland, 5-3 now for Bethlehem Catholic. And the road for Bethlehem Catholic, unfortunately, does not get any easier in the next coming weeks. No, and we mentioned that before. I mean, you're going through, you know, Nazareth next week and then Central Catholic, and then that's a different kind of game because it's your Correct. rival, right? Exactly. Um, and, you know, Beth, and, and what Coach Ward said, he said, the guys have been fighting all season long. They, there's no quit. They've been fighting. And you see, you saw that tonight. You just also saw some frustration. And, uh, you know, that's something they need to address. They need to get home and talk about and, and take care of. It, knowing that as, as hard as it may be, you face the number two ranked team in the state. That's correct. And, I you mean, know, we and, didn't and talk about that that quiet. much. It's but a, it, it, they're quietly the number two team in the state. Um, they're, they're just – they're, they're a team that's kind of stacked together in all the right places. They have all the pieces, and they're still missing two offensive linemen. Yep. So Parkland wins this one 40-3. I'm sure Coach wants to talk to his players. And we'll wait for Derek Moore. Derek Moore is lined up right around midfield. I'll take you through the scoring while we have the opportunity. Matt, Matt oh, 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 before I go through the scoring, what's one thing, if you're a Bethlehem Catholic, do you tell your team to get ready for next week? I mean, you, hey, listen, the, the scoreboard, you got three on there, right? You didn't get your touchdown, but you got three. You did miss a bunch of pass plays that were off by just a little bit. You know, those are going to you're going to catch those, and sometimes you're not. You know, you're, they're going to be out of reach. You did have some drop passes, right? But at the same time, that being said, it was more so, um, you know, just a little bit off on the targets. And, and your quarterback's I, health is the is the biggest issue. It, see, hopefully, getting okay. him out of here healthy, I think, was the key. And just getting yourself to a position where you get everybody on the same page again. And I think tonight. You know, very well there's the opportunity for them to get off the same page and then kind of start pointing the fingers at each other. And, and they didn't do that. They kind of stuck together. They kind of fought through it together. I think they have to know, guys, like we are in a battle this second half of the season. You know, I, there's no other way to sugarcoat it. You know, we're facing five straight top-notch opponents. You know, these are like five straight playoff games, and that's a lot for a teenager – to, to take on, but they have to continue to fight that uphill battle. And, you know, Coach Ward has to get them back together and just and get them to regroup and recommit to each other. You know, you can get them to recommit to each other and just stay looking each other in the eyes and, and be honest with each other and say, listen, I didn't play my best tonight. I made mistakes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick it up next week for you. Yep. And, and have them each be able to do that, I think that will re-solidify their commitment to each other and, and I think we'll see a different part, or different Bethlehem Catholic team next week. Well, we'll see 
Whitehall and Central tomorrow night. See how that pans up. Luke Spang, a one-yard touchdown run at the 834 mark, made it 7 to nothing. Then Trey Tremba, a two-yard touchdown run. That was at the 423 mark to make it 14 to nothing. That was your score after one quarter of play. Second quarter, Trey Tremba, eight-yard touchdown run, made it 20 to nothing. Luke Spang, then 20 yards to Connor Johns to make it 26 to nothing. A 17-yard touchdown pass from Spang to Connor Johns made it 33 to nothing. That was your score at the half. From there, a 13-yard touchdown from Spang to General Sanchez. That made it 40 to nothing. And then finally, then a 32-yard field goal to close things out to make it 40 to three for your final score in this one. And, you know, Matt, looking around, um, Emmaus getting another victory tonight against Liberty. Uh, Liberty will be on a, you know, a, a quick week. They'll play Thursday against Whitehall. But another good victory for, for, um, for uh, Emmaus. That's, that's a big that's one. Four yeah. in a row now. That's a big one. And, again, so Emmaus is on, like, the flip side kind of of Bethlehem Catholic. All right, let's go, go down the field and Derek. Down here with Coach Meisman. Coach, 40-3 to three win tonight. What went at, went right offensively for you guys? Uh, they did a good job uh, defending the run, so we had to throw it a little bit more. And with Luke, three-year starter, and some of the receivers that we have, we feel we can be successful. And then that opened up the run a little little bit. I'm just a little upset at our start in the second half. Uh, came out a little sluggish. Wanted to get it going right away and try and punch one in. And defensively, I thought we played as one of the best games we've played since I've been here. 8-0 and heading into Easton next week. What are your thoughts heading into Easton? Stress to the kids, these last three games are a three-game playoff. I said this was the first round, next week's the second round. Still have goals ahead, and, you know, everybody's gunning for you. And I said instead of being the, the hunted, we got to be the hunter. So uh, we got to keep our focus and have a great week of practice. Thanks, Coach. Guys, back up to you. All right, thanks a lot. And, uh, you know, we said it. We, we were talking about the schedule for Bethlehem Catholic. But let's talk about the schedule the other way. You know, Parkland's get Easton at Cottingham mm -hmm. and then back here at home in their season finale against a red-hot right now Emmaus team. Absolutely. And, you know, a AJ, if you're still on, i got to tell you, you got to get your dad to talk with a little more emotion. <laughs> you know, he, he's just very calm and cool and collected. Let's get some excitement out of that big guy, right? <laughs> let's get him, get, get him fired up. But you're right, you know. You know, Parkland, and I I love how Coach Monsman said it there, too. You know, they are the hunted. They are the top team in the Lehigh Valley right now. They are the hunted, and, and I'll continue my thought in a second. Let's go down back to Derek Moore. Derek? Here with Luke's bag. Luke, three three passing touchdowns, one rushing touchdown. A lot went right offensively for you guys. Take me for your performance tonight. Yeah, I think we all played well, and, you know, Trumba didn't have as big of his game, but you know, that's a huge impact. We can use him as a decoy and let other people make plays. And, you know, I just put the ball where my receivers are going to be and they go make plays. 8 0 oh, must feel good. Now you're heading into Easton next week. Yeah. What was Coach's message to you guys when you guys were in your huddle? You know, it's one week at a time. He said this is last three weeks are a three week playoff. You know, it's for EPC. So we're going to come out every week. This is our, next week's playoff week. So we're going to go hard at practice all four days, five days, and go out and go to Easton and have some fun. Good luck, Luke, the rest of the way. Thank you. Guys, back up to you. All right, Derek, great job down in the field. Uh, finish your thought. Well, first of all, Luke Spang listened in the huddle. Yes. He definitely listened because he reiterated. You know when you say exactly that, you, are you listening Monsman to the coach? Said. Are you looking yes. in his eyes? So, so we can tell Coach Monsman, Luke Spang, <laughs> got your message loud and clear. Um, but they're right. I love, I love how Coach Monsman mentioned, you know, they are the hunted. But you know what? If you are the hunted – Sometimes you can get complacent. So taking on that attitude of becoming the hunter and just going out each week and just hunting down that win and, and going and being aggressive, having that attitude I think can pay off well for this Parkland team over the next couple of weeks. Well, that'll do it for tonight. Final score, 40-3. to three. We'll be right back at it tomorrow night in a East Penn Conference matchup between Whitehall and Central Catholic. Looking forward to that one for – Derek Moore, Dave Micah down the field for Matt Avancho, for Sean Riley, Sports Fan Base Network, Al DeCarlo saying so long. As Parkland stays undefeated 8-0, they win this one 40-3. Have a great night, everyone.